Welcome, everybody, to the H3 Podcast Live. Thank you to Dollar Shave Club Quip and Hims for sponsoring this episode of the H3 Podcast. God bless you. Today's guest, oh, I forgot to open the thing. Today's, well, <laughs> today's guest is the Lord of Spice, Woo! the greatest interviewer. Of all of time, our generation. Whoa. I don't know if we can say all time because okay. I, th- I don't. Okay, think I'm that getting you would too excited. That. I would not. I would not. I'm getting but too I would, excited. But I could say, <laughs> I, it may, it may be that you become that, the ver- because you're a young man. You have much wor- of your good work ahead of you. Yeah, but you're setting me up. I feel like okay, for okay. A big, <laughs> big, <laughs> let's say the a big greatest, fall from grace. The greatest interviewer of with chicken wings on YouTube no, currently. Get all that out. <laughs> and YouTube. Complex's host of Hot Ones, the great and wonderful Sean Evans. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you being here so much. God bless you. Thank you for having me. It's yeah. actually an honor. I have to say, one of the coolest things we've done in our career is probably being on your show. That I remember that yep. fateful afternoon. <laughs> that was a beautiful thing. Like Yeah, in West Hollywood. <laughs> your The show has become this, like, it's so legendary on new media. I think that it's one of the highest honors. I think a lot of people come from traditional media. There's probably still some who don't know what the show is. Yeah, but for pe- sure. of people who know what it is, it's mm-hmm. like yes, <laughs> it has like a it has a cult quality to it for sure, yeah. for sure. Mm. Well, um, first of all, as the king of spice, and the dude has eaten a Carolina Reaper twice, multiple times, uh, who eats the hottest sauce in the world on a weekly, sometimes daily basis. It's true. Who has conquered the world of heat. <laughs> I have. How's your butthole doing? <laughs> butthole is holding up for everybody who's concerned out there. It is just, it's battle tested. It's military grade. Yeah. It's never been better. You know, I feel really? like it's like, it's like somebody getting in the gym. You know what I mean? I feel like I've just <laughs> built up a superhero butthole at this wow. point. Wow. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite toilet paper? Uh, Charmin, you know, triple ply. If they had a six ply or twelve ply or fifteen ply, it would be all that, you know. Fifteen ply toilet paper, <laughs> yeah. like r- wiping with a book. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Clogging that thing I'm, up every time. I'm always looking for good toilet paper, and so far, mm-hmm. I haven't found that perfect wipe. Well, I feel like too, because there's such a range. Like, I don't know what animal would use some like single ply God. public bathroom toilet paper when just for like another forty cents you can just have that quality, comfortable experience. I feel like their only business is on people who buy it by accident. Right, right. And like <laughs> I've been there and I'm like, oh wait, I shouldn't have stopped at the corner store to pick up toilet paper. Or bis- or just offices. Or hotel have you noticed no matter how nice of a hotel you stay in, it could be a five star uh four seasons, I don't know, a great they always have shitty toilet paper. It's like they decided that's the one place we're all gonna cut the corner. <laughs> and too, you know what drives me insane is that they always have like <laughs> nine different types of face lotion at some right. places and then they never have toothpaste mm. but like toothpaste you can't oh get that God. through TSA and I always have that yeah. problem where I'm like I don't have toothpaste but why isn't that standard like toothpaste toothpaste should be at every uh, every what hotel what is going that on is so true. it's like yeah I gotta write a also, letter also it seems like cause when you stay at these nice hotels they they get like lotion from all these companies mm-hmm. they're like hey try our lotion you can buy some at the front counter toothpaste hello there's definitely a void in the marketplace there <laughs> We are identifying. <laughs> That's so true. We, these, these are, really, yeah. these are this weak is an points important of podcast. This is huge, yeah. uh-huh. you guys. Mind blown uh, today already. There's a great Eddie Murphy. I don't remember. I think it was Eddie Murphy. He's like, I don't care how fucked up your life is, how poor you are, get the two ply. Like, if you don't, <laughs> everybody can afford that two ply. For sure. Words it's to a live luxury by. Mm-hmm. everyone deserves. <laughs> uh, well, before we get started, we made a little tribu- tribute to you. Whoa. <laughs> An appreciation of your spice and vulnerability, your super powers, <laughs> one may say. I'm excited. So here is a little tribute. So if anyone at home is not familiar with Sean Evans, if that's possible, shame on you. <laughs> Long pause. <laughs> but if you happen not to be, like it takes the champion to just or if you're just a big it. fan like us, please enjoy this video as a tribute, and I hope you enjoy it. I'm already into it. Like it takes a champion to just take a bite of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow, okay. Shit. I feel like a bunch of shit. Shit, shit. Ah. I have nothing to prove. Oh! Ah! This is what? spicy. <laughs> That's spicy. You are part <laughs> satanic. That's why you can do it. I'm not a superhero. <laughs> this is you. I'm just a normal guy. I'm not a superhero. <laughs> I'm, not a superhero. <laughs> I'm just a normal guy. <laughs> 
<laughs> so there you go. Wow, that's yeah. like something that should play on a loop at a modern art museum. <laughs> well, our, our editor Alex spent all week on that. Shout out Alex. So definitely actually, pulling his weight around there's here. There's a little <laughs> moment here I think that deserves a little attention. Little, you see, there's a there's Dead. an Easter egg in the in the undershirt. Is that what you're gonna point out? No. Oh what shit, no. What the hell did you do, Alex? You didn't tell Look me. Look at you don't see the you don't Is see that the, a Teddy Fresh shirt. That's a Teddy oh Fresh T-shirt God. right there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know it. You see the little bear oh, see, goodness, man. peeking you are, out. You are repping the name. Wow. Hey, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what I was gonna say is that he he. You've seen this gag where they make a wink, but they like they just distort it in Photoshop. What he did is he found you winking in another video, cropped it out, <laughs> Whoa. put it over your face. <laughs> so, pretty convincing. So. <laughs> it was. I fell for that. I was like, did I wink at the end of that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but what that really. <laughs> Is meant to celebrate is your your seemingly invulnerability to spice. Are you? What's the deal? Do you not show it? Are you just? Do you build a tolerance to spice? What's going on with you? I think that, and maybe you could probably help with this, having been on the receiving <laughs> end. Is that when you're doing the show? I think that there's a responsibility with the interview that kind of turns you into a superhero. You know, right. you have to like right. keep the, the show moving and like the pace. So even if you are uncomfortable, you can kind of get outside of it the same right. way, you know, like an athlete in a moment of being exhausted might do right. something superhuman or like a mother that sees their child rolled under a Volkswagen might have that like super strength to pick up the car and get them right. out from being pinned the, right. under the tire, you know? That makes a lot of sense. So I think that that's part of it. And then two, I think that there's a part of it that is like, I need to show a strength, like a show of strength to you, the guest, mm -hmm. as sort of a comforting thing. You're the, you're the commander who leads the charge. I'm like a shaman. Right. Yeah, exactly. So there's like part of it where, you know, if I'm freaking out, then maybe you freak out. Like if I go on <laughs> Bear Grylls' and show and he's like, we need to scale this waterfall. And then he's like trying to do it and freaking out and crying and stuff. Then I'm like, I'm not going up there with him. Right. You know what I mean? So like yeah. if I'm freaking out, you're not going to keep going. And part of that it, right. you know, it's interview. But part of it is like helping see you through this journey. You know, that's a great response. Um, that's really powerful. Hopefully I can keep that going. Um, <laughs> so does that imply that somehow when the interview is done, that it, it hits you? I think like at this point now doing it like 110 times over the last two years and change, there's nothing that I don't expect. You know what I mean? So sure. I think that that helps. And then there was a time early on where, yeah, it would like fuck up my day and maybe like fuck up the day after. But really? now at this point, like if I have a shoot at like two, I could hit the gym at like 530 or six. Like wow. I am starting to adapt to a point that like maybe is like borderline concerning, but at least my life is keeping a better pace. And do you, do you... Do any kind of like regulating your body? Is there any doctors involved going on? Here? Well, I'm almost afraid to check it out because yeah. like they'll <laughs> shut down my weight right. or something like that. Like you can't eat any more spicy food, and then it's like, well, now what? You know I what mean, I mean? Better off just not knowing. Yeah, exactly. Like I'd prefer to just not know. Like the time I'll question: Do you have? <laughs> if you don't go to the doctor, you can't get cancer. Exactly. Like I think the ignorance right. is bliss in that yeah. respect. Okay. But then too is like I never really do anything. Like people give me like 10 million tips all the time. Time, but I do just kind of ride it out mm -hmm. and then at this point I kind of enjoy it because you know like as you know there's so many like calls emails da 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 when uh -huh. you do this and like I can kind of build in an excuse if I'm like doing hot ones or like <laughs> popping a pepper or like doing one of these shoots <laughs> where I'm like no one talked to me for like three or four hours, That's great. you know, and yeah. then I'll just go home. I'll blast the AC. I'll put on basketball shorts. I'll catch up on some DVR. I'll Sounds listen great. to music. And like, I've actually come to appreciate that I can like play that excuse. I just be like, everybody leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> exactly. And so they like, respect it. Exactly. They have like to. They think they have to. Like they think they have to give but, you that long but leave. Now, but now that you're now saying, you're it, saying that, you're totally fine. Wait, I've fallen into the H3 <laughs> podcast <laughs> trap. Oh no. Uh, that actually sounds great. That yeah. sounds wonderful. Yeah. So tell me about this. So you guys, so since I was on the show, yep. what was the hottest one then? Uh, I'm trying to put it. Would that be Blair's Mega Death Sauce with Liquid mm -hmm. Rage I think at so. the time? Yeah. That was the one. Yeah. So so how does that compare now? Are you guys still using Blair's? Is that like number two or did you just remove so from the rotation? We took that out and then we brought back this new like hyper. Was Blair upset? Well, maybe. You know, I probably <laughs> at some level. But then Blair, I feel Do like. Do you know Blair? 
I've I know Blair through people. Like I've never met Blair. Like, Damn, I got it's like drop. an elusive I'm on the bench. man in New Jersey. <laughs> but I also do think like you know he had such a run there for a couple seasons where you know he's like a a Jersey that we hang in the rafters. Like right, he's right. retired. He, right. He's That's Hall true. of Fame. Like yeah. he has like a statue outside <laughs> right. of the stadium. You know, right. like his right. legacy will live forever. That's um, good. But then with those sauces, what we did, you know, like speaking of the consequences of it, you know, like when you do something like this on a long term level, we were like looking into, you know, like the possible side effects, like from a health perspective. And it's like, well, if you use natural ingredients, then, you know, like you actually end up like cutting that down quite a bit. Really? Hmm. So like that was our move. Like we had to take the lineup and move to, you know, more natural sauces. Was just Blair's like, easier on uh, extract me. based or? Yeah. So like a lot of those like super, super hot ones, they'll use an extract or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's what like really turns that up. Hmm. So our challenge with this is like, obviously we need to make a super hot sauce, you know, hmm. like that's the name of the show, but then how do you do it with natural ingredients? So what we did with this is we hooked up with our boy and you know, I'm like <laughs> through reputation, smoking Ed Curry. Yeah. And we put them on the phone and we're like, that was our challenge. You know, like, how do we do this? And what's funny about Smoking Ed Curry and then these just pepper growers in general Mm -hmm. is they're all like architects who are trying to build the tallest building. They're all kind of insane. The subculture (laughs) of these spice farmers is nuts. And Smoking Ed Curry might be the craziest one of them all. (laughs) So he grew the Carolina Reaper. I mean, of course. (laughs) He grew the Carolina Reaper, which for years and years was the Guinness Book of World Records hottest pepper. Notorious pepper. pepper. Right, notorious pepper. Yeah. And then what happened is this farmer in Wales grew a dragon's breath chili Mm. that topped the Carolina Reaper. Mm. But Smoking Ed is always playing chess. Never to be top. He makes and I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to share it, but fuck it. It's like <laughs> he has this 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 war chest full of peppers. You know, he's got aces up his sleeve that are all hotter than the Carolina Reaper, and he had it even when the Carolina Reaper is the Guinness he Book of World Records. He was just chilling back. He was daring oh my God. all these other chili <laughs> wow. to top him so that he could just dunk on him right back. Like Kobe. Right. So the next one in that line was Pepper X. So we're like, all right, so if we take Pepper X, and then we, you know, like, we, and here's the other thing that we wanted to do, because it's not hard to make something super spicy, you know? And we don't want just a sauce. It's like, well, you might as well just, like, tear gas yourself in the face. Pepper spray your eyeball. Right. Yeah. So, like, a culinary challenge is in balancing that the flavor and then making something that has a great flavor. So that was our goal. That was our challenge. Can you really enjoy the flavor of this? You tell me, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> I will. At the, I want to say at the end of the show, because I don't want to ruin this right, beautiful right, moment right. to actually chat. Right. We wanted to try this, and the crew wanted to try it. So we're yeah. all, as we're I'm saying, somebody tried. did pop the seal. We, some, they yeah, just they smelled, smelled it. it. Oh, okay. <laughs> they gave it a whiff. Nobody's tried it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I want to try it. I want to try this. All of us are going to try it at the end of the show right. as I'm saying thank yous. But, like, so tell me, compared to Blair's, how much, how far have we gone? Well, I think that, like, at some point you just get into the clouds where it's, like, you're just, you know what I mean? There's not that much separation. Mm-hmm. I think, though, like. On just biting into it, if you have like Blair's or De Bomb, which you guys have. The Bomb is the one is that, that the I remember. Is that number nine that we did? I think it was number eight. Oh. Yeah. And De Bomb, and I always see it with the guests, is always the one where like, pff, like this one's fucked up. And that's true because. And the one that stands out in my mind is <laughs> the worst one. Right, it is. It is, for sure. <laughs> and it's because it like, it has that just pure extract and then like. Very mm. few, if any, redeeming quality. Uh, right. So you're not a... only eating something that's super hot, it yeah. also doesn't taste good. Doesn't... So it's just a miserable experience right. all around. Right. So I think that, like, having gone through that or, like, whatever, then this does seem like a reprieve because at least it doesn't taste like shit. Mm. You know what I mean? Interesting. Like, psychologically. Plus, like, once you're in it, and maybe you can tell me from, like, being on that end and as somebody who's gone through it a bunch of times, I feel like. You know, it's not necessarily like an escalation in the sauce. Like it's kind of mm-hmm. a bell curve. Like it is. You end up like eating, and you're like, "Oh, this is good," and then you're like, "Oh, this is getting spicy," and then you're like, "Oh, I want to <laughs> die," and then you have like a couple wings left. So it has that like psychological thing. But once you get to that point, like your mouth's like so burnt out, you're so like into the show, like you've sunken into that seat mm-hmm. that it's like fine. You might as well get pepper sprayed. Like you're not going to be in any <laughs> yeah. worse a condition. No, you're definitely right. Once I hit the bomb. Because you're like, man, how can it get any worse than this? But it actually can't. doesn't really. Right. 
Yeah, for me, the number nine, because I did the last two. And two, because you have such a unique per- experience, yeah. too, because you, you didn't I just, right it, yeah, I you just had to like, <laughs> yeah. go right in. So that number nine killed me. Mm-hmm. But And then the mm-hmm. 10 was a little better. I wonder if it's worse for you. It's way worse. <laughs> because I was like, the bomb is awful. And then I was somewhat like relieved by it. <laughs> right. Way. But you just got slammed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, that's a very unique experience. So, guys, stay tuned. We're all going to hit you. I'm not. You have nothing to prove. I'm not gonna. Yeah, you don't have to. You, okay, I feel like you, though, you, it's just gonna it's be your you weekend. To, it's gotta be a real Jonestown okay. situation right. here. I think. I'm not gonna. Yeah. Yeah, whatever you want, but um, but I was wondering, what's the difference? Because we had two of these. I was yeah, like, Reaper. So, we have Pepper because X we wanted to. Yep. Yeah. So here's the situation: is like you know, it's like with Samuel Adams. You might have like a winter ale, and then you might have an Oktoberfest. So yeah, so we used they're the Carolina Reaper. Yeah, they're both pretty fucked up. <laughs> we put the Carolina Reaper in one, and then the last dab Pepper X in the other. But also because shout out to the fans. Thank you to the fans. Pepper X, you know, coming from Smoking Ed Curry, it only grows on one farm. Mm. And then now we have this, this like is super international <laughs> demand Bro. for this sauce. I was like, so they like our fans. Shout out to you guys! Thank <laughs> you so much. Shout out. Drained the lake. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. it's like we can't like ever like you can't make enough as we grow it as we make it it just disappears <laughs> so to like bridge that gap in the growing season we're like here's the last dab carolina reaper but that is the you know what we want to do like to us like making an episode is a creative process but so is making a hot sauce you know this like one's you always spicier. try it that i think I think that they're, you know, I think that if you asked 10 people. Side by side. Five Let's people do it. We'll do it that. at the end. Five people would at say that. At the end that. of the app, we're going to do it. We'll do both. All right, cool. You don't have to. I'm into it, though. By we're the way, it. the okay, all right. Pepper Bad X, boys, yeah. is that going to be the final name? Oh, Gila. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, like, at, at first it was, like, we were, like, name to be determined. And then we were, like, Pepper X. And then we're, like, whatever. But then now I feel like. Everybody knows it as yeah, Pepper X. That that's it's what on I was the label as Pepper X. Right. So and I, I like, like it. It's like, oh, it shit. It is. Yeah, yeah. It's a well, good name. Well, the next name. one's going to be Pepper XX. I was so, kind of right. going to right. say that. So, so I, we had it as a placeholder, but now <laughs> there'd be like massive confusion in the yeah. marketplace. Can't yeah. We called it something different. <laughs> you can't yeah, change so we can't it. Maybe change back it. in the day, he'd call it Pepper X, but now that you're hitting the scene. I like the name. Thank you. It's it's All right, then sold. Ship. It's X. Yeah. And so, but... Are you implying that this psychopath who makes these peppers <laughs> has another one up his sleeve beyond X? And another one? Oh my and another god. another one? And another one. And he, he's like eating them, right? And yeah, I was wondering. Yeah, he's he, insane. He'll like, I've seen him, he'll just be like, I'll be like, what are you doing? He'll just be like snacking on Reapers. And stuff. No. <laughs> he's, nuts. he's nuts. He's about it, about it. Like, he's about the life. <laughs> Does he genetically alter? Like, how is he breeding peppers? I mean, I guess that's a science that I don't understand. Maybe. Yeah. So, better. like, I, you know, it's same to me. Like, he'll explain it. We'll like talk it through. But yeah, he's like, yeah, he's like doing these like crossbreed like Frankenstein is he a biologist? experiments. Like, he bi- he has like a whole interesting backstory. If anybody wants to dive in <laughs> deep on the Googles, I won't like air some of his laundry. But yeah, he's been uh a breaking bad chemist of sorts his whole life Instead and then of now he's and now he's, <laughs> hot sauce. he's he's channeling that into hot sauce yes <laughs> crazy well all right stay tuned to the end guys it's going to be love, I'm, love I'm, smoking I'm, it. I'm love smoking it he's the best so before you developed the show did you have an affinity for hot foods or was yeah. that just like incidental i mean um you know like when i was a little kid uh you know at the bears games if my dad has chips out and he has salsa i remember being like <coughs> Like a little kid, six, seven years old, like going to dip into the salsa. My dad has hot salsa, and I'm like, ah, like this is too hot, dad. Can we get like mild salsa? But he's like, not in my house. So my dad was he a salsa it, purist. And he's like, if Ethan you want to dip like into that. the salsa, <laughs> you got to do real salsa. So I think like is by he proud of you that, now? <laughs> <laughs> still, yeah, no, no, tough he's, crowd. no, he really is. He really is. He's like my best friend. He's like, he's so yeah. But but and too, like by virtue of that C minus D plus parenting, like it did kind to lay the groundwork right. for what we have today. Right, so sure. I've always had that sort of tolerance, but as I say in the show sometimes, like, I'm no superhero. Like, I go through it too, you know? <laughs> I really do. But the fact that you soldier through. What do they say? Courage is not being fearless, Sean. Wow, yeah. It's confronting your fear. It's, uh, it's the cross that I bear. I'm a real hero. Bra- bravely. <laughs> Was there ever a point in your career when you're like, you know what? I'm... I'm not doing spicy anymore. I'm fucking done. I'm not touching anything spicy. I don't want to see anything spicy. I'm done. <laughs> well, I mean, there's like part of you. Here's the way I look at it. Hot ones, I'm obsessed with it. 
and I, you know, this wouldn't have happened if I wasn't, you know, mm-hmm. and like the team around and whatever, and we never would have been able to make this float because it is a super lean team mm-hmm. on a shoestring budget. And the fact that, and you would know this, you know, doing a celebrity driven talk show mm-hmm. week over week, dropping that shit at Thursday at 11 a.m. like clockwork <laughs> is, you know, that kind of looks easy at a surface level, but you go behind the scenes on that. It's That's brutal. a lot yeah. of yeah. brutal. Brutal. That's yeah. a lot of rabbits being pulled out of a hat. That's a lot of things coming together at the last second in order yeah. to make that happen. So, like, yeah, there's sometimes where you're like, ugh. But I am obsessed with it. Like, honestly, sometimes I couldn't even, like, imagine my life, like, without this sort of thing. And then it's so important to, like, so many people. Like, it really mm-hmm. does have a cult <laughs> following that I feel like you know, there's a responsibility even for your audience, even when you're kind of like, uh, I need a, you know, I don't know how sustainable that is. Like the last two years to like do that. I don't, there's no way I can do that for the next five or the next 10. But like (laughs) right now, you know, like even when I have those sort of like, I need a vacation thoughts that takes me out of that. The fact that like there's somebody at Thursday at 11 AM that like looks for that, that like needs that. Mm -hmm. There are couples that make wings and they eat them together Mm -hmm. on Thursday. You know, like there's so many people in their cubicles that watched and laugh or on their lunch breaks or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like the kids that are passing it around and I don't think I can like let them down, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Cause I wasn't, you know, I don't know. Do you ever have that? Like, where you're like, well, I'm like, yeah, all the shit. Yeah. Sometimes. Well, I, well, that's a different, sometimes it makes me feel it's it's a weird. I have a weird relationship with it. Sometimes lately, because I feel like we've been doing it so long that I'm I've often find myself getting burned out. So when I taking breaks, I just feel like guilty about it. I feel yeah. like unable to rest, mm-hmm. even though I'm not making videos. So I'm like, well, why don't I just fucking? I don't know. It's a whole cycle. Yeah, it's the whole thing. Dude. <laughs> it's a whole cycle. And then <laughs> yeah. to the other side of it is that you're like, well, I could just lose this in a second. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, all right. Well, and then think back on like, oh, well, like. I was, you know, that was, like, not a good headspace to be thinking that way because all I do is, like, want that back, like, need that back. So Mm -hmm. I'm just, pardon the pun, striking while the iron's hot and then just trying to keep doing that. Yeah. Word. So let me start. Let me go way back. How did you start working with Complex? So, um... I was a broadcast journalism major, but there's no real, like, you know, you always have that dream or thought that you could be on TV, but Mm -hmm. it's not like you can just, oh, like, apply to a network and be like, give me a show. Right. So I was working at uh, a marketing agency. I was, like, doing press releases and stuff. And then at night and on weekends, I would take as many freelance uh, projects from magazines as I could just to keep my eye of the tiger you know Mm -hmm. what I mean Mm because the job that I was working at the time was like a little bit of like a soul-sucking boring job Mm -hmm. so I was like well I need to keep like I need to keep my edge so I'd take as many of those as I could doing nights and weekends and then at an all-star weekend like five or six or five years ago um, I had all these interviews with like Two Chains and John Wall, Dwight Howard, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar like all these things that were supposed to be print interview situations and it was right when complex launched their youtube channel right. so they're like oh well, we need to program this thing out we just mm. need videos to get mm. this plane off the ground like can we put your interviews on camera and i was mm. like fuck yeah because <laughs> if i have you wanted to be in front of the camera well at that point in my life like an on-camera two chains interview would be like the coolest fucking that was thing your first ever thing, right? right exactly so like wow. so we did that and then, you know, you ship those off, and I thought it would just be, like, kind of a cool page in, like, the chapter of that stage of my life. Like, right. I didn't really have mm-hmm. any idea what would happen. And then they called me, like, 30 days later, and they're like, hey, we're kind of building this thing out. Would you be interested in being one of the on-camera people? And I was <laughs> like, all That's right. Great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I quit my job, sold all my shit, got nice. rid of my apartment in Chicago, wow. moved to New York 30 days later. And, uh, yeah, that was, like, four years ago and to now. Wow. Yeah. Four years ago. Yeah. Well, That's I want to get into the rise of the great Sean Evans in Complex and the creation of Hot Ones after we get back from this break. Thank you to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this episode of the H3 Podcast. Listen, it's this simple. If you have hair anywhere on your body, here, let's hold it up together. Can you see that? Ah! If you have hair anywhere on your body, you are messing up by not using this hefty, meaty razor that glides and destroys any hair on your body. It's the best, okay? They do everything to keep you looking and feeling and smelling your very dang best. They've got shampoo. They've got body wash. They've got toothbrushes. And, of course, the best razor I've ever used. I get an amazing, high-quality shave every morning. 
from Dollar Shave Club's Executive Razor. I mentioned this previously. I I have a beard. I w- I don't know if you can call this stubble a beard. It's more like a <laughs> fuck, like I fell in some dirt and didn't wash my face. Some people have beards. But here's what I use it for. I use it right here cuz it's the only razor I've ever used that doesn't give me pimples and make me want to jump every time I shave my neck. You ever get those things it ruins your whole day. Another thing I use it for is the on my neck. I clean up the back of my neck. I feel like an adult. It's crazy. I don't have like pubes growing out the back of my neck like I did my whole life. It's like disgusting. And then you're like, "Oh, that's it's it's just as easy as that." And you need a great razor to take on the job of destroying those neck pubes. And they're up for the task. I guarantee it. <laughs> but the true hero of any morning is Dr. Carver's Shave Butter. You know why, Ela? Because it's butter. Because it's butter. That's what I was hoping you'd say. Oh, wait, that's the shame. This Cause one. It's... Why, Ela? Because <laughs> it's butter. Yeah, it's butter. So this <laughs> shave butter is actually incredible. It's not foam. It's not cream. It's none of this BS. It's butter. It's like soft. It's like, oh, my God, you're like a Thanksgiving turkey. Just, <laughs> just about to pop in the oven. And then it just destroys the hair. It's an unbelievable experience. You're going to feel fresh. You're going to feel beautiful. You're going to have to get this, you guys. Another must-have experience is the Dollar Shave Club delivers it all to your freaking door. So you don't have to go talk to some dweebs at the supermarket who are on their summer job who aren't even hit puberty. Trying to give you advice about what razor you use. Please, whatever, talk to the hand. That means no more trips to the store, wandering the aisles, hunting for razor, shampoo, toothpaste, then having to play at being a cashier, scanning a bag in your own stuff. Oh, wow, why don't I just work? Why am I just your employee, Ralphs? You just pay me to bag my own shit. This is America. No, you get we get shit to our doors now. We don't leave the house. That's the American spirit. For a mind-blowing experience, join Dollar Shave Club today for just $5.00. With free shipping, you'll get six blade executive razor plus trial sizes of the shave butter, the body, the body cleanser, the one wipe Charlie. Oh, got him. Throw it out. All done. <laughs> Fresh. Then keep the blades coming for a few bucks a month more after your trial is over. Get yours at dollarshaveclub.com slash H3. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash H3, guys. Thank you, Dollar Shave Club, for sponsoring us. Please hit him up if you need a razor. And you do, because you have hair on your body. Next up is my <coughs> long-time favorite freaking thing in the world, Quip. Quip is a vibrating little tube that other people also call know as a toothbrush. Have you guys ever bought an electric toothbrush? Let me just preface by saying this. I was in the market for electric toothbrush a couple years ago before I knew about Quip. <laughs> And I'm looking at all these name brands, all these super fancy. It's like 200 bucks for a good electric toothbrush. I was like, what? I bought it because I'm a sap. And I was like, I don't even like it that much because it's like super bulky. Uh, You feel like you're like doing road construction in your mouth. (laughs) That's why Quip was like, okay, let's let's address this. $200? No. Starting at $25. How about a sleek design that not only vibrates the perfect amount to clean your teeth, but also tells you when to switch sides. It, you turn it on, it vibrates. Every 30 seconds, it does pulsating. So you know, oh, that side's done. Are you freaking kidding me? It's like having a dentist in your mouth at all times, keeping an eye on how you're keeping <laughs> taking care of things. There's nothing worse in life than stinky breath and bad Oral hygiene. I'm telling you, if you're trying to get, if you're trying to dip your carrot in some ranch dressing, you need to keep your mouth fresh as possible. And Quip <laughs> is the best. A good toothbrush will nearly get you at 25 bucks. This thing is going to last you. It's going to keep your mouth clean. It's the best product. I personally endorse it. I love it. I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. If you don't have a Quip, you need it. I'm dead serious. Whew. That was some serious shit. Let me put it this way. Most most toothbrushes don't get named one of Time Magazine's best invention of the year. No. But Quip did. If you want to find out why, get one for yourself. Here's the deal. Quip starts at just 25 bucks. If you go to getquip.com slash H3 right now, and you'll get your first refill pack absolutely free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack for free. The top pops off. You put the top on. You forget about it. This is it. 
free at getquip.com slash h3. That is G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash h3. There's something else I wanted to read here. C- including free shipping worldwide. How the hell is that possible? Really? After being in the shipping game for on, yeah. on our side, I was like, wow. <laughs> if you ship like a piece of lint to Australia, <laughs> they charge you a hundred bucks. Well, anyway, I can't endorse this product enough. So, guys, thank you so much to Quip for sponsoring us. Welcome back, everybody, to the H3 Podcast Live. So, you started as a reporter. Uh, for Complex, you covered Ninja Warrior training, Kim Kardashian book signing, FBI training course, etc. What is the most <laughs> memorable moment you had pre-Hot Wings days at Complex? Oh, man, there's so many crazy things. One time I ate, like, The Rock for a whole day, right. and that was insane. Tell me more about that, because that I've, I've seen that video, and yeah. it is insane. So, well, he has an insane diet where he eats, mm-hmm. like, nine pounds of food a day, including, like, three pounds of cod. So, <laughs> the idea, oh it's God. nuts. Just, just straight cod. Like, three <laughs> Chipotle burritos of just cod I, daily. I think people daily. don't understand God. the dedication and, like, insanity, even, that it takes to maintain that kind of body. It gave me a lot more respect for him, especially, too. As you get older and older and older, to like more and more cod, like that. Yeah, you just gotta keep <laughs> feeding that cod, feeding that cod. But the craziest thing is, like, well, if you look at Michael Phelps's diet, like mm-hmm. during that Olympic training, he had that same thing where he's doing like twelve thousand calories a day or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But he's mixing in some French toast. He's, he's got like some burgers his, yeah, and stuff. Right. The thing about the Rock's diet is it's nothing but brown rice and broiled veggies and fish. That's and then wow. nuts. They just bring out the plates one after one after one after wow. one, and they'd all way as much as like a Range Rover tire and you'd just be digging that fork that and guy digging must that take fork the in. gnarliest shit. It's <laughs> he fills that, that bowl up. Yeah, it has to be insane. So I'd just be like going and going and going and I can't handle that. Like I eat like a bird. Unless I can just drain a G pen and like hit a Mexican restaurant, then I can set some records. But like just <laughs> normal, I can't eat like that. So I'd just be Going in the fork and feeling like I'm just killing this thing for a half hour and I wouldn't even put a dent in it You know, it was just like a drop in the bucket and then the next meal is always like on the way So it's not that was oh insane. God. one time I worked at a Worked at a convenience store high in uh-huh. Colorado. That was like a pretty fun weird thing I, Especially yeah, go ahead. I had a question about that video. Yeah. I watched it at the end or during that video, some stoner guy comes in and there was plants throughout the video. And he's yeah. like, hey, you seem like a cool guy. You want to blaze a joint? And I was like, there's no way this is real. So here's the thing. Like, yeah, like during that, there's all these, you know, like, and you knew that that would happen. Like, I knew they'd set me up with, like, a shoplifter. And here's the thing, too. Like, when I smoke, I'm not really, like, a social guy. You know, like, I'm not like yeah. Rihanna. I can't go sit courtside at a basketball game. You know, like, I can't <laughs> handle the eyes. Like, I'm like, I can barely get through, like, a self-checkout at CBS. I'm a like, no. I need to be, like, yeah. boom, in a room <laughs> yes. with just a friend or two, like, yeah. watching movies with, like, shit on deck. So I even told the people, like, when I was doing it, I'm like, there's, like, a 50-50 chance, like, at some point I'm going to be like, wait, I have, like, a bunch of hidden cameras on me. Like, I'm in the middle of the oh show. God. Like, I'm going to grab three frozen Snickers and just go back to the hotel without Without anyone. saying anyone. Yeah. And it was like, where's Sean going? Right. But I'm a total paranoid. pro. Yeah. So I held through it. And then, yeah, you knew that there'd be plants. Like, I knew that, like, they'd send in somebody who would do something weird and, like, send somebody in to shoplift. So there was always, like, I always had, like, a antenna out for it. <laughs> but also, at the same time, I thought, too, that there'd be, like, somebody helping me through the register and shit. But actually, <laughs> it was very, like, all right, here's how the register works. Like, I'll be in the back. Like, here you go. You know? So people would come up and be like, oh, like, they'd get a sandwich from the deli, like, order no, you need no to mustard. Know the I'm code. trying to navigate that. <laughs> thing. Like, they actually did, like, really let me fly free. But that guy, too, when he was going up to me and he was just hanging out, I was like, this has to be a plant, like, whatever. It has, it just... But it wasn't. <laughs> that the, was real. That who was goes up real. to a stranger at a cashier, <laughs> first time meeting, he's like, hey, you seem cool, you want to blaze? Yeah, too, like, at the same time, like, I wasn't being that polite to <laughs> him. Yeah, it wasn't Like, I wasn't that... being that chill with him. Like, no. I was kind of, like, already had, like, a bunch of plates spinning that I was trying to keep up, and I was like, well, this guy's being annoying, and in my head, I'm like, well, I bet this is just, like, the... Stereotypical stoner guy that they sent in here to like fuck with me. So yeah. I was actually getting like semi annoyed with him. So I was being like dismissive and not really fucking with him like at all. And he was just hanging out. And then at some point, like, cause I'd have like a thing in my ear or whatever. So I could like talk to whoever was like in the mm-hmm. van or downstairs or whatever. And at one point I turned around, I'm like, is this like your guy? Cause I'm like, just call him off. Like, just this, end it. This gag isn't working. Like, just get him out of my face. Like, let's get on to the next thing. And I was like, is this a guy? And like, we do not know. 
Oh my that god, that's is. so funny. And so I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to go meet him out back by the dumpsters and just spark So up. Sean went back <laughs> with the cameras. <laughs> and two, like, the only thing that disappoints me about that video is, like, one time I got this 19-minute cut of it, and I was like, this shit's funny as fuck. And then mm. they cut it oh. down to, like, some, like, little like, yeah. four-minute video. I was hoping for more panic attacks. And, yeah, and, exactly. And, like, the 19-minute video is, like, actually yeah. amazing. And then they, like, <laughs> chopped it down into this, like, very just snackable little video that was, like, cute, I guess. But, like, the 19-minute, I was like, it was like, I was like, this is, like, real art. <laughs> <laughs> how was, uh, how did you become the Hot Ones guy? How was the show conceived? Are you the creator of the show? So, Chris Schoenberger, who runs First We Feast, me and him, we were always, like, just, co- like, just friendly in the hall and just had a good rapport. And then one day he came up to me and he's like, hey, I have this idea for a show where we interview celebrities but eat violently hot chicken wings. Mm. And the way that that hit my ear, I was like, that's the funniest <laughs> fucking thing I've ever heard in my mm. life. So, you know, we get into a room. We're, like, laying all the things, laying everything out. We call in Tony Yayo from G unit to help shoot the pilot. And so mm-hmm. he's helping us workshop out the beats too. Mm-hmm. And then what you see now, like at back then, I think it's maybe like the first episode is maybe like seven wings. We didn't really have any idea of what it was or what it would be. We kind of thought it would be this funny show. We always had dreams of it being this sort of internet sideshow, but never like this aspirational, right. powerful, A serious show. place. Yeah, for people to come, right, right, exactly. So what you see now after 110 episodes is just an 110? evolution. Wow, we. Congrats. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, when you say that out loud. I just... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, wait a second. Whoa. Yeah, it's nuts. It's nuts. Every Thursday for like two years. Wow. Um, was it a hard sell to the bosses at Complex, the concept? Well, at the time, it was so <laughs> wild, wild west. I mean, I could like go into some things that, you know, maybe could have been handled better at higher levels, but like, um, they kind of we're out of our way. Like they were kind of like, if you guys are going to do this thing in this weird room, they were so focused on other projects that they, that they really believed in. And us, we were just like some like, whatever. uh, Yeah, exactly. Like whatever, kind of like doing this in the dark. And then, you know, I actually think is, you know, in a lot of ways, what helped the show become what it is, is that there were so few hands off chefs in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. It was just me and Chris and we could make this thing work on our terms. And, you know, people would come in with advice, like, you know, people be like, it should be six minutes. I got it. And we would just be like, just can (laughs) thank you. Like that. Yeah. Like, thank you. Thank you. Okay, cool. And like (laughs) all all these people like, maybe they should be peppers. Do we have to do 10? I think, you know, like all these people (laughs) would be like, okay, cool. Well, can you just like go over here and do (laughs) that? And so like me and Chris could just still like to this point, it could just be us. Us. And then because of that, I think it's given us a little bit of elbow room because we like really stuck to what we wanted to do. And then now it's to a point where like nobody really. They can't say st- shit. Yeah, no. they can't really cross yeah. any lines because we'll just be like, this it's is incredible. Like, exactly. Exactly. It almost remind me of like how Seinfeld came to be mm. in a weird way. But I think that that's with a lot of these oh, boats that float. Right. You know what I mean? Like if you have too many people who have ego and not much know-how right. or like have mm-hmm. a title and not much right. know-how getting into the way of these sorts of things that's what sinks those mm-hmm. you know but it's just me and chris kind of being naive picking it up as we learning really paying attention to our audience being motivated by like the growth because it wasn't always a big hit show mm-hmm. as you guys know like how long did it take to get to from zero to ten thousand subscribers a year. Until, like, you know it exactly a year. Yeah. so it's like you really have to believe in what you're doing because mm-hmm. there is no immediate payoff and i think brands big media companies they don't let ideas evolve you know like they don't really let things grow so i think that the fact that we were so misunderstood and <laughs> underrated mm. and put into a that's corner what empowered you guys that's what empowered us for that's sure pretty amazing. I, I hope someone i hope someone at a media company is listening they should i guarantee they're not but they should they should <laughs> and if you have a budget <laughs> well, you, yeah you i don't kinda, know you I have can't no idea. really plan for it you know it's that's just right. one of those things yeah. that just happen like yeah. that i think that you know you can you can make some chess moves along the way to help mm-hmm. you succeed yeah. you can't make people fuck with you you just you know, gotta yeah. you want it and even if yeah. you have a good idea it doesn't necessarily mean that the plane's gonna take off you i'm know? sure it wasn't your guys first attempt at it's like you have to keep hitting and hitting and hitting mm-hmm. and hitting and then when you find something that hits you ride it exactly mm-hmm. exactly yeah. um what I, I i saw you say somewhere that the whole concept behind the show was that you guys wanted to make a celebrity interview show that didn't suck 
Right. And, and a way to disarm them in a way, too. Right. And the solution to that, which was Hot Ones, was so beautiful and elegant. I'm wondering if there was any other early versions of the show before the spicy Hot Wings idea came in that you guys were considering. No, it's just like Chris just saying that line. Let's interview celebrities, <laughs> but make them eat violently hot chicken wings. Right. You know, I'll never so, forget really, that. It's the simple. way he said it. The it's, it's, the, it's the clarity. Exactly. It's not just yeah. spicy. It, the, <laughs> violently was crucial. Like, yeah. if you just said spicy wings, I've been like, like, yeah, eh. let's, get, let's <laughs> shoot yeah. a pilot. Yeah. But he was like, violently hot wings. Like, it was like revolutionary <laughs> but in my brain. Yeah. It's like, all good ideas can be expressed with that much clarity. <laughs> exactly. And two, I think that all great ideas or inventions or whatever, you're solving for a problem that maybe people didn't even know they had. Mm-hmm. So, you know, mm-hmm. you have the celebrity interview format, which is such a tired format. Mm -hmm. And so we're like, well, how do we make these interviews not boring? You have so many celebrities, they'll sit down. They're in a PR-driven flight pattern, right? How do we disrupt that? And our answer for that was violent, violently hot chicken. <laughs> so the show was it an instant hit? It sounds like it wasn't. No, I mean it took a while. I think um, here's here's but here's what it was. So it would go out and maybe we'd get like eight thousand views or like twenty five thousand views really? or whatever. Okay. Like when I'd wake up the next day, like that's what it would say. And I was always like, I feel like this should gain more traction. It's better, mm-hmm. yeah. right? It's better than. But mm-hmm. here's what motivated me: is that everybody who watched it seemed to love it. You know, the comments were like, this is yeah. fucking amazing. Like, this is going to blow <laughs> up. This is going to be huge. You know what I mean? And it had such a cult thing from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, if we can just get more people in the tent, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, that's the whole thing. So we talk about the tent pole episodes all the time. There was that video that you saw with me and Chili Klaus mm-hmm. eating. Uh, it's one of his favorite videos of all time. Oh, I man. Think. That he was one of the about it. <laughs> that was one of the early. That's very early yeah. episodes. OK. And that was our first sort of like that got people millions interested. and millions of views, right. like mm-hmm. the number one thing on Reddit. Type Did you video. expect anything from that video when you shot it? Because you well, endured no. a lot for mm-hmm. the promise of very little. And that, it that was, moment. yeah, it was very, <laughs> for sure. That's a yeah. good way to put it. Yeah. It's a good way to put it. But I did just believe in it. You know, I just did. Right. And me and Chris, we, mm-hmm. and too, because it was like, you know, it was also to the chip on our shoulder that was created by being pushed to the side for right. like other things. We're like, all right. You know, so we just did this thing like on our own for so long. And that, when that blew up, you're like, whoa, this is crazy. And then the Key and Peel one was like a real that one was oh, great. Yeah. level up situation where that, that was, was like huge. picked up by every website right. and everything. And then to it helped validate the show in mm-hmm. that we could now pitch people because that was like so hard early on. Was Those are huge, process. huge uh, yeah. talent. To exactly. So they're like, oh, well, this legitimizes the show. Plus it took off in such a crazy way that now it's, you know, it, it helped get the train on the tracks for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Like those two things those two videos were especially early on i was going to ask did you have trouble booking guests at first because it's kind of a hard sell isn't it yeah because in you know it, it's even to this day because on paper it does sound so insane you know like like yeah. you said earlier people that know the show you're like you're in because you understand that it's not just this gimmick you know that's right. a disruptive it's, element in the yeah. interview but it's an interview show first you know, but if you don't know it and you're like, uh, and you're a celeb, you're a movie star, and then, you know, YouTube is already in some or circles it, it, kind of a nose yeah. up situation. And, and yeah. if you have two offers, like, hey, Jimmy Kimmel wants to interview you, right? Versus some guy wants to eat hot wings with you on YouTube, right. yeah. exactly. on YouTube, exactly. But, you know, and too, because you could like, you could go to Sirius and hit a bunch of radio shows right. in an mm-hmm. afternoon. Like, yeah. we require an hour and a 15 commitment. minutes of your time. <laughs> Plus, there's that caveat of the 10 scorching hot chicken wings. So, mm-hmm. it was a very hard sell early on. We were kind of like almost tricking people or asking <laughs> favors. There are some, and this is true, like some guests early on that actually like that pitch. Like, when they saw that pitch, they're like, oh, that's fucking funny. funny. You know, like, Uh, some people, it does, like, connect on the wavelength, but it did take a lot more persuading and a lot more seven types of smoke early on to get people (laughs) in that seat than it does now, but that doesn't take away from the fact that it actually, it still is a challenge. It's It's a tough sell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's funny. I think uh, uh, an appearance on your show would do more to, to promote something than like all the other stuff combined like it's so it's that powerful you i know? know that and you know that yeah you know but it takes it's, it, it, it's, it's tough it's to annoying. get that it's, uh, right it's you know, the youtube it's the whole everything on youtube and new media is just like whatever right. but like the, but they don't the understand power the power behind it is right crazy. and then 
Two is it's like the fans will like shout out like who they want they will, all yeah. the time. So like yeah. The Rock is somebody who fans obviously Gordon. want to see on the show. Gordon, Where's Gordon at? Bill Burr, Philly D until we got him the other Where's day. Where's Bill Burr at? Right, exactly. But to Bill, you know, like he gets the pitch and we've hit him. And one time I did the show AOL Build and he was like behind me. So I <laughs> figured out like what kind of cigars he likes. And I went wow. to this cigar store and I like <laughs> bought these expensive cigars and I like left them in the green room with like Aww. a note. You know, like I've done you know a lot you know i know you know bert like bert you know knows bill and those guys joe yeah. rogan no it's like a guy that wants in the show so bad so maybe I'll hit them. I'll be like shoot him shoot him a text can you help me out blah 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 so it's like you always do that but it might not click with them like if they haven't seen an episode or maybe they just are That's really don't fuck with spicy food i and feel like too. he would love the show actually. i do feel like he bill yeah. i do but he has to he, there's something that has to get you to click over like yeah. the eric andre show that was my favorite show i never even heard about it until like the third or fourth season mm-hmm. you know what i mean like there does have to be something Something that clicks, right. and then All beyond the that, yeah. And then beyond that too is it's like these people are busy as fuck, yeah. That's and true. nobody necessarily wants to do press, you know. Like if you have a free <laughs> yeah, day, it's not necessarily true. like you and I are buddies. Like mm-hmm. we text. Like how long was it? Like how long did it take even for this? To work out, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Yeah. Even when I'm in LA or whatever, yeah. you know, it's just tough, and I'm not that fucking busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're, that's that's very true. Um, you mentioned in your AMA that at first you were more or less conning people into doing the show. <laughs> what did you mean by that? Well, I'll take like there's a couple things that come to mind where it would be in the DJ Khaled episode, right? He's doing sneaker shopping and he has, you know, like buddies at Complex who we kind of like made them pass it along as a favor. Mm. And he's kind of agreeing, but doesn't really understand what that there is. are scorching hot chicken wings. You know, <laughs> that's like, why like he puts over uh, wings. Everyone. Yeah. So he was like totally taken by surprise. <laughs> right, by okay. it. I remember Tanache, she was doing a cover shoot for the magazine and we're like, you know, while you're doing the six hour cover shoot, like what if we <laughs> slid in, set up our black curtain and did this show? And they're like, oh, is this some sort of like ancillary added value video? And we're like, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, and then, like, right, right. then once you get stuck in that seat, you, you can't, can't escape leave. the show. Yeah. Like you're stuck. You're a prisoner. <laughs> you guys of the show. scrounged. You did everything you could. Everything. And in the, still, in the spirit day, of a real, the climb on YouTube, I think everyone's, you've really been through the, the gauntlet. No, I know, and it's learned. I've learned a lot since then, and it has been just such a crazy thing. I think that that's probably what people don't understand is that, yeah, this is like seven people who are setting their hair on fire every week and then mm-hmm. putting it out in a garbage can full of ice cubes just to make sure that the next episode can happen, you know? And mm-hmm. there's a lot that happens with that Plinko ball when it goes down before that, that you know, before that can secure itself, so... It's been crazy. It's been nuts. It's gotten a lot easier, and I'm very grateful for that. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's still a it's still a grind. Yeah, I mean, well, with more views and more subscribers and higher profile guests, the pressure is off. It, it, it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. Plus, yeah. too, because then once you do like a hunt, you know, like you're like what you know, like who's out, blah blah blah. You know, like somebody's in a press tour. Somebody can do this. Somebody can do that. Um, but yeah, it's 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 nuts. It's nuts. Has anyone ever gotten sick during the show? Oh yeah, like mm-hmm. uh, who who are the worst? Who has taken it the worst in your? So you know when you say that, the impulse is to go to people who tapped out. You know, like Jim Gaffigan or Rob Corddry or uh, Ricky Gervais, and be like, those are the guys that. But actually, I think that in most cases. Those were just guests being sensible and being like, this is getting crazy. Like, I want out. Right. When I really think about who had the hardest time, Martin Garrix really suffered for the art. You know, like, it's the people who are dying and then they just keep going to the next mm. wing. And to the next wing. Um, Coolio, <laughs> he was passed out in our green room for like an hour after oh my that. Oh, God. Crazy. Yeah, he was just there. And then, like, it's all glass, the green room that we had at the time. <laughs> and we were in an office space. All so glass. there'd be, like, <laughs> random <laughs> people in That's the office. That's not very private at like, all. Who's passed out? Like, that's just, it's Coolio passed out. Martin Garrix, it was so funny because he was just killing milk the whole time. And while he was happening, I was like, eh, that's going to be a problem because you can't like put away a gallon of milk without puking just right. physically. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, he has a team with like all these like vloggers, like, you know, following him around and stuff. And I always think about these, you know, he's a little, he's a kid. He's the sweetest guy ever. We love him. We talk about him all the time. And, you know, he had this thing where like at the end, he's like, where's the bathroom? Like, oh, like over there and to the left. And like the vloggers kind of like following him around like, <laughs> As he shouldn't, he was like 
go away. You know, like it was like back in your hole. Mm-hmm. And then I'd hear like all these stories from people that were working in the office. We've since moved, but like in the office at the time, they'd be like, dude, I was just in the stall. I hear somebody dry heaving in the sink, like, ugh, ugh. Oh and it's like, and then I walk out and it's just riffraff in a peach tuxedo. Oh, like, no. oh my God. Peach tuxedo, like just <laughs> dry heaving in the sink. So it's like, we've had so many stories countless stories like it's all like blurred into one what thing a, what a me, treat but to, to, do you yeah. ever feel bad like <laughs> or is it just but you do but then you're like it's good tv you yeah, know like it's is. part of both it's really good ways and like they signed up so there is a part of me it's that's not like, that bad it's, no, not, it's like, not that bad. No. they're not they're not actually but it is great. They like, are riffraff in puking in your bathroom. <laughs> yeah. what, I mean, that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful exactly. moment to share exactly. with somebody. Exactly. Did Bobby Lee? Bobby Lee is actually our next guest. Oh, really? Did he actually shit ball. his pants? <laughs> so here's what I'll say. I can't say <laughs> you weren't in his pants, right? Because I didn't. We didn't Presumably. swab his underpants yeah. or anything. <laughs> but here's what I'll say. Sitting on this side of the table relative to Bobby Lee, he like got up and it like had a sound that was slushed. Like disconcerting, like a, like a cooler with a little water on the bottom. Yeah, it was like, or it was like a melon being dropped on a <laughs> kitchen floor. No. You know what oh I mean? Like, God. it didn't really have. <laughs> no. it didn't really have a sound that was like anything other than what it, what it seemed to be. You know, so like while that was happening, I was like. Did something just happen? Because I didn't know how else. But you know, I think that he kind of even was. You know, he's such a per, he's such an artist. He's right. such a performer that I think like, you know, he, he probably could have held it, but he probably was just like whatever, let it hey, fly. You know what? <laughs> Fuck it. I'm gonna embrace this moment. Yeah. That's I, I I aspire to have that little levels of well, giving a fuck. God uh, willing, he'll do it on readily. your show. <laughs> like, Bobby, I'm so glad you're here. Will you please grace us with shitting your pants? I'll do it too. I feel like I could shit my pants at any time. I'm always clenching my do asshole. It. <laughs> Let one fly. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna drop. I'm about to drop this cantaloupe, dude. Um, uh, con- controversially. By the way, if you feel something, I'm playing. I'm Shredder. playing with Shredder. Yeah, Who, it's Shredder. Uh, our last guest was like. Bob, I thought you were playing Bob Saget. Bob Saget was here oh, last week. My boy, and yeah, he was like. Uh, <laughs> Shredder was rubbing on his feet, and af- right after we turned off the cameras, he's like, "Dude, I thought you were playing foots- footsie with me the whole time, and it was freaking me out. I didn't want to say anything, but I was really weirded out. It was just Shredder. I was like, I, f- I feel bad about that. How was Bob? Great. Awful. He's not allowed back. <laughs> yeah. No. No, it was great. It was, it was great. Bob. It was awesome. It was it was a a beautiful moment mm-hmm. to uh, <laughs> sit across from the sag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Controversially. Am I saying that? I think that's a. I think I'm saying that right. <laughs> Which it. guests have taken it the best? Mm. You can say. Um, well, we've had Ethan. You're pretty good. <laughs> I was yeah. fishing for that. Um, no, I wasn't. <laughs> I think you know it's hard to tell because there's people that like just let it fly, and then sometimes you have somebody who the way they'll handle something in that moment is they will like just get quiet and mm. focused mm. or whatever. So sometimes it's hard to tell. But when I'm looking back, Dax Shepard, he had enough in him to just pour hot sauce on That's, you know like you know what? on the next wing. And One stuff. of my regrets was that I didn't go harder with the sauce. Really? Yeah. It's tough, you know. Because we were just taking... <laughs> that, has that been tough? That's, that's, you've well, been carrying well, no, that Well, no, because you. I feel like I took a bite <laughs> and I threw it out. Right. But I I have to acknowledge that eating a whole wing, which a lot of people do at the end, right. versus taking a bite is a world of difference. It is and it isn't because it's like everybody's kind of different. So maybe, you know, a little nibble for somebody who doesn't, you know, can't mess with spice at all is an unbearable thing for them to go through. And then on top of that, you know, it is lights, camera, action with all these lights on, you know, all these cameras on them. And it's like it is an uncomfortable thing. So I understand when people are like, all right, I'm going to do this because I need to get through this. But I'm not committing in such a crazy way to like clearing this whole wing. Mm -hmm. Plus... Ten wings is kind of a lot of food. It is a lot. You know, and then sometimes, you know, because whatever, sometimes we'll have a shoot at like nine or ten in the morning, so we'll have to just go whatever. Sometimes like seriously like fried chicken. Those wings were (laughs) room temp. Room temp. Yeah. Well, that's better than ice cold, which we've done a couple They weren't ice cold, but they 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 were like they were not good. Well, you know what? We've really <laughs> they were not stepped good. we've really stepped Shredder it up is since chewing on our tripod. I like you have a lot of very expensive equipment in here and a lot of wires. Just... Yeah. No, he <laughs> it's, a well, the tripod it's all a chew toy for him. 
Yeah, I've heard you guys have stepped up the wing we have, delivery we have. We, mechanisms. And yeah, we have like a whole we have a whole thing now. We never really thought about the wings and all that stuff. Because it doesn't really way. matter though. It right. And too, because it is you know, I think that in a lot of ways the way we've been able to punch out of our weight class with guests is because we do have this stripped down budget set that we can pop up whenever, wherever, you know, like we can do it in an LA studio right, right, or right, New right. York mm-hmm. or, you know, shoot Russell Brand and Ricky Gervais in London or right. whatever. So I think that it's even, what the hell? I lost my train of thought. Were we talking about the wings? Oh, the wings, yeah. The yeah. Wings, so not it's that like, yeah, right. or maybe we can just pop up at like a junket or in a hotel room, like Charlize Theron. We just booked a suite at the Four Seasons and ah, pop that thing up. So you'll be like, okay, well, like Charlize is coming at. 2 That's so PM. cool. I would never even expect that you don't yeah. want all shot in the same studio space. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But that's what's like. That's really what's helped. All you, you need is some wings and some sauce. Going. Right. And but a, then also too, that's what makes it tough on temperature because like, all right, Charlize is going to be here at two p.m. So you're yeah. like, all right, cool. And you got everything set, and then it's like 205, 207, right, 208, right, right. Yeah. 208. They're getting a little bit softer. She's got to come in. She's got to get mic'd. She's got to sit down. Got to light it. Got to slate yeah. it. You know, and like that time is it's just ticking. Tough. And then by the time they bite in, they're like, this is kind of cold. Or, <laughs> you know, the interview is an hour long, an hour and 10 minutes long. So it's like, whatever. By the time you get to the sixth, like maybe it's like cold then. But we've done a lot to make sure that it's like served up. That's good. It's, it comes with it. the experience of 110 episodes. Yeah. You know, I will <laughs> say, though, to what you said. <laughs> Because I, the first, like, six I ate entirely, and then I was like, man, I actually don't f- want to eat another full wing. <laughs> right, you get full. It's full, it's yeah. filling, yeah. yeah. I Especially wish I would have waited for the 10th. Like that, too, it kind of builds you up. All right, guys, we are going to roll to a quick break. There's only one spot, so please don't go anywhere. It's quick, it's dirty, also, it's uh, Viagra. We're <laughs> oh, selling hey. Viagra, so you're not going to want to miss it, trust me. It's not exactly. Cut it off, Dan, hurry. <laughs> Talk about uh, a great sponsor, okay? Hymns coming up next. I love these guys because basically they're making the H3 army multiply. <laughs> Let me tell you why. <laughs> Sexual performance issues, more common than you think. Over 25% of new erectile dysfunction cases are guys under 40. Okay? Guys under 40 are struggling to maintain an erection and that's just not right. It's not right. It shouldn't be like that. You should be having a raging boner until the day you fucking die. And they should they should plant you dick first <laughs> in the ground with your raging cock. That's the way it should be. And and that's what they're about, making sure it happens. Why do guys turn to weird solutions or nothing when they can turn to medicine and science? 4 a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness for men. Thanks to science, ED can be optional. Him connects you with real doctors and medical grade solutions to treat ED. Well known generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions can help you combat ED. No, this is not a scheme. This is an actual drug that, because of the generic uh, copyright on this drug, it's Viagra. It's Viagra. They keep skirting around. They're like, oh, it's a, it starts with a V. It's Viagra. They're selling a generic equivalent of Viagra. Okay, it's going to get your. Dude, you're, what is it that Kendrick Lamar said? I hope my dick gets as big as the Eiffel Tower so I can fuck for 72 hours. <laughs> yeah. There's no waiting rooms. There's no awkward doctor visits. There's no lines. Save hours by going to 4 It's so easy. Answer a few quick questions and chat with a doctor for a confidential review. Products are shipped directly to your door. Severe ED isn't just an issue for rich old guys in bathtubs. Specific. <laughs> It affects men in their 30s and 40s. Bring your best means performing, being your best means performing your best. No important person doctor visit, not anymore. It's erectile without the dysfunction. Hard made easy. Say hello to your little friend. <laughs> Try hymns for a month today for just $5. We'll get you started with just five bucks while supplies last. See website for full details. This would cost you a hundred bucks if you went to a doctor or pharmacy. Here's the deal. Go to 4 slash H3ED. Yes, H3ED. And that's not an accusation against me in any way. It's just the URL. So that's 4 F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash H3ED. 4 com slash H3. Guys, if you are in the market for a blade, a razor, or a big ass hard flipping carrot to dip in that ranch dressing please consider supporting our sponsors thank you for watching let's get back into it
other any anything. But that's true. That's true for sure. Hopefully there'll come a day when fucking people understand that. Are we live? <laughs> um, <laughs> we're waiting for Eli. Right there. Yeah, it's That's okay. <laughs> I can start. The thing is, we have a YouTube cut, so this kind of banter will just cut out. Fuck it, just keep it in, man. <laughs> or keep it in. <laughs> but we're waiting for Eli. Respect. Um, There's no show without Eli. We, me, me, and Sean were just talking off camera about how, like, people from traditional media don't understand how good doing shows like the A Stream podcast would be to come promote something or hot ones compared to whatever other stuff they're doing. Right. Because I always I've thought that forever because we have big audiences and then highly targeted eyeballs and then it's in a sort of a crowdsourced way like you know who people want to see on the h3 podcast right and same so it's right like, all right like if you do this like for the people like that's actually what they want it's right. just hard to get that to click in people's brains especially now but i do feel and you do too and we've benefited from it that the scales are tipping i hope so but it just takes like a savvy publicist or a savvy superstar to understand right. that yeah there's yeah. some good savvy publicists out there who are starting to understand that yeah for sure. but like there's something uh, it's something more about like you're engaged with your fan your audience in a way that doesn't even exist in traditional media you exactly know? when you're here with somebody they're getting an experience they're really connected that that you can't get exactly you know, I think. plus it's just realer yeah we're just talking about how... We're just tooting our own horn over here. Yeah, <laughs> a little of that. We were just talking about how, like, well, the people watch. <laughs> <laughs> we're just talking about <laughs> how people who do shows on traditional media don't get as much effect yeah. on, you know, talking. Agreed. Talk. Okay, where were we? Should I cut in, Dan, or should we just include this? I say I vote we include it. I think mm -hmm. yeah, it was interesting. Let's let's include it. Yeah, we have the <laughs> oh, damn, I'm Dan. I like that. All right. <laughs> um, where the flip was I? So DJ Khaled, as we mentioned previously, a mutual friend. He made it through. <laughs> yeah, mutual friend. Man, God bless him. He made it through three wings. I guess this really isn't that demystifying after hearing. Your, your backstory. Story. Right. right. He didn't know what he was getting himself into. Had no idea, and it all took him by surprise. Mm -hmm. It was really, uh, he was blindsided. Did you, him. I mean, did you not lose, like, uh, a little respect for the guy? Like, what is number three? Like, <laughs> Capitillo? I, but then, too, it is, like, historic. You know, it's... It is. is he the lowest score of all time? By far. And three? It would almost be impossible <laughs> to go lower. Yeah. And it's impossible it is to historic. prepare, but there is part of me that's always waited and maybe in a sick twisted way wanted somebody to tap out earlier how there it's like you, if you if you willingly yeah. if you willingly come on the show and tap out at one but like it, it's it's pathetic <laughs> and it would be unpopular and the people it would, would live hate forever it. but then on like just an anarchy level it's right, kind of legendary right. but it's <laughs> kind of it's kind of like really perfect that it's dj Khaled taking that spot forever and like, too like in the same way that we were talking about <laughs> audiences like there's so many people who watch hot ones or have watched since or the lore behind the DJ Khaled episode who don't really know yeah. DJ Khaled, the performer, right? So, like, they know him as the guy who tapped out That's on the so third funny. Ring. <laughs> yeah, you that's know? great. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah. Have you spoken to him since that? Does he embrace the, the legacy he has on your show? Well, it's hard to tell. I think that if you hooked him up to a functional MRI or, like, a lie detector <laughs> and asked, like, showed him a picture of me, he'd be like, yeah, cool guy, but, like, that thing would just be going, like, you know, like that. And uh, one time I did see him in the office you know, he was just like yeah. walking around. Yeah. And I was like, oh fuck. Like I'm gonna give him a bottle of last dab. You know, like I'll just run up on him. And he's like he's like, What are you what are you making fun of me? Yeah, right. He had like a team of like twelve people right. and like the whole thing, like they're walking out in the phalanx formation. Better, why are you chewing on our table? Sorry, hold on. Our dog is eating the table. Uh -oh. Sorry, go ahead. And then when he uh when he turned the corner, I like timed it up perfectly so I'd just see him and he couldn't <laughs> avoid it. And I was like, Hey bro, here, this is for you. And then he like looked and then he like got it and then I was just I was gone. And he no was, words like, oh, exchange? Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to do a little it was just I think we it. share dis I think he hates us. Yeah, I think he hates I mean for <laughs> rightful for right. Yeah, reasons. yeah. It's a totally kind defensible of, position. We kind of <laughs> got it we kinda of got him a little bit when we met him in yeah. Miami. And we and I got him a little bit. <laughs> got him. Yeah. You got you definitely got him. He's well. I think you know. Like there's certain. 
that was one of your first big guests, right? I mean, Khaled. Yeah, no, he and, was like, and he was real time. popular at the time too. But no, you know, I, I think that we we caught him. Like, you know, his first ever Snapchat, and that's like really what took him. You know, he was he's always a big. You know, not to disrespect DJ Khaled because I think that there's like a, a lot of people that think he just yells on the microphone. He's, he's actually not. He's actually a legendary DJ. I agree, and does deserve more credit than you know most people that, from a surface <laughs> level. Sure, he is. At, you know. He, he did, has this he place. Did come from the mud. He did come from the mud. He has this. He has this spot, and he does. You know, he does deserve. Dan, can you grab shredder? Credit. It is like, but at the same time, um, where's sorry, it? sorry, our dog sorry, is sorry, destroying the show. He usually just oh. lips here, but shredder, you're kill- you're destroying our show, shredder. You're destroying our show. Get out of here. Now he thinks it's a game. <laughs> <laughs> I tape in his mouth. All right. I love you, Chad. Sorry. Get the hell out of here. But when he ex- but when he sort of exploded in sort of uh, an Apple commercial, soccer moms everywhere and knowing him way was with the Snapchat sort of. These are the keys to life. Yeah. This is the path to was more insane. wins. You know, he rode that those that was memes insane. hard. Harder than he should have, honestly. Check, but I don't know though. Who's laughing now? <laughs> but you know? it so blew up. We like, really caught him at crazy. that moment where you know he was he was exploding on the internet. Like the first ever Snapchat, he actually did it on the. Or I don't know if it was the first one, but like when he downloaded and learned what Snapchat hmm. was, was on the set of Hot Ones. Wow. Mm. No. <laughs> yeah. So it wow. was like wow. that whole thing happening with Snapchat. Like that's what kind of like took his thing and made it explode. Wow. And I remember, like you know, he was always saying like they, them, mm-hmm. like they don't yeah. want you to win. That was like, in his music video, like the Bahamas one. Yeah. So he's been saying yeah. that forever, and yeah. I ask him that question. <laughs> Who are the they? show? I'm like, who are they? Who are they? And he's like, losers, bums, fuck boys, pieces of shit. You know. <laughs> and then I see him on Ellen like eight months later, <laughs> and Ellen is like, who, who are, are they? they? <laughs> right. And then he's like, you know, it's that person at work that's always dogging you. Like he had a totally mm-hmm. like ironed out he got, he got an daytime an TV Ellen friendly answer. answer to that question. <laughs> How he's changed. Ellen's like patting herself on the back like she's the first person to ask yeah. like who are they to DJ Khaled like it's this moment but I remember thinking that that was funny seeing that arc on Khaled like mm-hmm. going from the DJ Khaled from before there's like a, a BC you know like there's like a line <laughs> and then to see that before arc hot ones after and that hot total ones. mainstream crossover and then like the Ellen show and the way that he answers the who are they question. Well, the best DJ Khaled moment for me yeah, yeah. does always have to be. Do you have a favorite DJ Khaled moment? Mine is uh, when he got lost on the jet skis. Yeah, that was <laughs> lost <laughs> at sea he on the jet lost skis. At sea. It got yeah, dark. It, it got dark. <laughs> it got dark he was lost at sea on jet skis and snapping it. And he was like on Snapchat saying to call, call me. Call me. <laughs> call. He I don't remember send, the name. He was sending out an SOS. <laughs> yeah. Right? He's like, well, whatever, Catherine, if you're yeah. listening, just give me a call. <laughs> he was serious. He was panicked and he was scared. <laughs> but then oh I don't God. know. It is hard with him to know where the where the Joke line ends, is, like where right. the line that is. That But real, he does but do a good great, job. Yeah. But it was amazing that. watching that happen live yeah, that on bad. Snapchat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel lost. like the inter- <laughs> I just feel like that. I feel like there was a rawness to the internet back then that's gone. And it wasn't that long ago, too. It was like two years ago. Two years, right? Yeah. But that was during like when pranks in the hood was happening, and like uh, you know, Spider Man, like pedophiles were running. Wild Wild West. (laughs) We're running YouTube, (laughs) and Khaled was lost at sea, (laughs) and we just had like all this content. We're just like, oh my god, a lot of fodder for the uh, for the reaction videos. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, man. (laughs) What happened? (laughs) Needs a comeback. The problem is that YouTube doesn't allow that shit anymore. Mm. Like all the stuff we would we were talking about then, YouTube was like doesn't even allow it on the platform now. Mm-hmm. And now what's happening is they're removing our videos, our old ones and our new ones, because we're talking about it. Oh, really? But people don't want to hear me bitch about YouTube. <laughs> um, I do. Yeah, that is what's happening. <laughs> like now we can't even make fun of shit because they don't dis- they don't differentiate between criticism and the actual source. It's just like it was in your video and we're going to demonetize it or remove it. So yeah, they're just scrubbing the whole yeah. history. Yes. Interesting. <laughs> With the incredible success that you guys had and it seems like nobody cared about your show in the beginning. Real underdog story. Clearly now upper management and the people who are running the show know about you guys. Mm-hmm. How did they react to the success of your show? And how, as it came up, where they were like, oh, fuck. Like, what was going on there? Yeah, I mean, I think that 
<laughs> it's gotten so loud that you can't really ignore it anymore. So, uh, you know, it's it's definitely it's the crown jewel of, and... of the whole operation, I would say. Well, I appreciate you saying uh, that. It is. It's not objective. Either. Yeah, I think it's... Or, I mean, it is objective. Yeah, I think, you know, it's gotten so loud and then that's, you know, f- made things definitely easier on me and Chris. So, you know, you look into the future and hope that that can get ironed out even more. So I'm definitely optimistic about that for sure. Hmm. Um, I want to ask you something I saw on the internet. <laughs> um, has how has Taco Gate affected your career? Oh man! And has is the backlash finally <laughs> gone well, down? Well, now it, I think now it's 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 uh, born again. You Ta- brought it back. Up. <laughs> Taco Gate. The- if you guys can see Sean <laughs> taking a bite out of the top of the damn taco twice, as if oh nothing is, as if nothing. It's I'll like defend. You're, it's as like if you're eating a camp. pita. So I'll defend this. Exactly, it is. I'll defend this. Here's I defend it on a couple grounds, and I and actually you know like I did Philly D yesterday, and he brought up Taco Gate. Really? So I feel really? Like now it's yeah, it's like a whole new life with Taco Gate. <laughs> but here's what I think happens. Like to me, I've always eaten a taco that way, and it makes sense to me on a couple levels. Like I like that meat tube at the end, right. and I don't really care about the lettuce and the cheese or whatever is floating up on to top get of that it. Out? I'm just trying to get. To that. Would you so ever I'm just make trying to get like a task out of the way? Plus, it's a way cleaner way to eat a taco. Like you don't end up with is. everything all over the spot, well, the point, all over the place. Well, it is cleaner, but, but you you're also not enjoying the... it properly. <laughs> but who are you to tell me? Well, how to enjoy why don't you, a taco you just properly? why don't you just make a ground beef taco? Why fuck around with anything at all? Well, listen. Why I, just why not just option, why not just, just remove buying a taco? Why, listen. Why not just remove the top part and have a little meat tube? Listen, you could, but then I That's don't know. Then you dog. break a, do you break the shell? It breaks a little bit. Now you're like, now you have like this but fractured cl- glass. Clearly, the at the end, you have to eat it properly. You can't <laughs> eat it from the top all the way through. I'll go gung 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 gung. Take that thing down, and then it's just taking the tube. The other pause. T- taking the tube down from the other side. You know, I I will defend this. It's I'll go to the grave. I'll against defend it. you. Thank you, Eli. Eli, try that. eating a taco bell because you're a mouthful. It might not ever go excited? back, Ethan. You might. I'll not try. Ever it. I'll try it. I'll try it. Try. Because there's I mean, it's always all the schmutz on the top. So all, there's too much schmutz. You clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a taco. They, it's not schmutz. They put it in there. It's cleaner. And here's the deal. I don't know. However, you eat a taco. If you were eating pizza and you just turned that thing around and ate it crust first, I would just be like, well, that's just how you would. You would. You'd be like, this guy's a fucking lunatic and I'm never hanging out with him. Oh, no, yeah. Um, I w- this is something that I that we've talked about previously and it's something that interests me. I feel like on the internet when you get to a certain size or not just the internet but anywhere in life to a point where people are looking up at you that you get haters. But you, I feel like you're a guy that there's nothing to hate about because you're just a dude making a show that everybody loves. So my question, do you have haters? Yeah, I mean, I think that as it's as it's gotten more popular, like weirder things happen, and like the twit, you know, my mentions do get weird, and like it isn't as fun anymore. You know, when it first starts and you're putting these things out, everybody is kind of rallying to it because they're fans of it yeah, and they want positive. it, and you're fun to root for when you don't have shit. Yeah. You know, like people root for you. But then I do think that like it's gotten to a point where I used to like going into the message boards and reading it or like going into the comments and now I don't. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't look because you never know when you're just going to get smacked upside the head with something that just makes like, you know, whatever. <laughs> like I'm human. So it's like, but that's my fault for like going into that and, you know, trying to figure that all, all out. I do think that there is of value to having that real life focus group at all times. And you guys do that in the way that you're connected to the subreddit and the way that you're connected to the fans. And there is, you know, I always want that connection, but I'm not going elbow deep into the comments anymore. Like, you know, it's just like even the things that, and this is like on me too, but like even things that are like stupid, drive me insane like it's not even somebody being hateful or like crazy to me that bothers me like you kind of can't live on the internet and have that bother you otherwise you'll be out of there in two seconds but it's like sometimes i'll get a dm that's like you know like whatever uh like that's like hey uh my friend alex having a bachelor party would you fly out to nashville (laughs) and do a live hot ones with us like it would be so cool like that you know and i'll always be like well i I appreciate that but then i'm always like kind of thinking like well, like, do, am I 
do they expect me to like book a flight and then like go there and then like what's the situation because they didn't really give me a ton of details like am I hanging out at like the house that they rented like am I out of pocket on a hotel and then I'll start thinking about these things like way just too mad much and then I'll end up being like I'll be like yeah I'll just be like at the gym and I can't like shake these like sort of like weird requests and like oh weird things and just like from uh, and I'm always like thinking about these. so then even that so like it's just so much mess and like so many things going on and then it is a minefield where you could just get to somebody that's like I fucking hate you I hope you die you know like that and then you're just like it's just a little too crazy you mm. know for me yeah. so now that you're like internet famous what is that the thing that's affected you the most is there other things that have come up that you didn't expect or how's your life changed basically yeah I mean yeah it's cool like people I mean that's it's good because in real life, it's a totally different experience than whoever is barking at you online. Like, yeah, in always. real life, people are like super cool. Great. Yeah. Always. And then, yeah. you know, like they'll come, like they'll, they'll be like, oh my God, you know, Sean. And that to me is like greatest, the fucking best. Yeah. It's yeah. the best. And you'll yeah. see people like light up or like double mm -hmm. take. And I'll be like, that's somebody you can that's always like, tell, right? When right. They recognize I'll be like, you. that's somebody who's watched a bunch of hot ones right. and then they, they, they fuck with the show and then they like see, and then like if they ask about the show or they have a question, like that to me is like the coolest thing. So it is such a positive experience in real life. And then like, yeah, like maybe the door guy does recognize you at the club. Like maybe, you know, like you are at a restaurant. Like earlier today I was having brunch and they're like, oh, this is like from the kitchen from Roy Choi. Like when mm. I was like, you know, the commissary is like, oh my God, this is so nice to have like the salmon toes. You know, like these like these whole like these things that are happen that are just amazing like even tonight i want to go see like chris D'Elia and coco at the comedy store and so like i'm like i'm like you know like in the dms with chris like hey can you hook something up you know like all those things like are amazing you know like mm -hmm. that is, is like even if you know the the paycheck ain't there like even if like the other things aren't there maybe you're feeling like shit or like whatever like that is all cool because you're making people happy with a show and then they want to pay that back like yeah. they want to show that they're appreciative by like doing some sort of favor for you or mm -hmm. like helping them out or like making you laugh or like making you smile or making you feel good the way that you make them feel good right. so i'd like treasure that i That's value awesome. that so much yeah. yeah that is the best i think that true genuine fans it's, on the streets are always it's great. always it's so nice that it's hard to understand that it's real and like right. really take it in because it, it's like it's amazing it's too much. Like. Exactly. And then, so that too, like, kind of cancels out. So then you're like, well, if I can just focus on the video and the interview and just making the next one and kind of live in the real world a little bit more than, like, diving into internet and the chatter and, like, all that, then it's probably just a healthier way to live your life mm -hmm. on a mental health Definitely. level on every level. <laughs> And so I've been more and more inching towards that sort of thing. But I don't want to lose that connection. Mm -hmm. Like, I care about, like, what fans are saying in the comments. I care about, yeah. like, what people in, like, uh, a, a discussion thread or whatever, like, thinking about the show. And I don't want to, like, lose that connection at all. So I guess I would say I'm peripherally aware. Yeah. I touch it, but I'm not, like, doing a cannonball into that pool anymore. Yeah. I would say the same thing. Yeah. Like, I feel like we generally always know what people think. Yeah. And when you go in... And try to like get it. It's way. It's just depressing, right? A lot of times, but it's like you know, you get the idea, right? You don't need somebody to like shit in your face. <laughs> you get it. I understand what you think, and I and usually I agree. Right. Yeah, too, because you know. like you know, it's not everyone's a hater either. You know, yeah, like, const there's constructive. Yeah. Criticism. So, and I think that like once you start thinking that way, that's not a good thing either. So, you know, it's maybe good to get knocked on a peg and the fact that everyone can tell you what they think all the time, you know, <laughs> is maybe somewhat helpful. It's balance in that. Act. Yeah, it kind of keeps you yeah. keeps you on the track. I want to say I hold your interview skills to be among the greatest. Um <laughs> I'm definitely not on load that. You are definitely known for your incredible yeah. interviews. Thank you. So my question to you is what is your research process like yeah so it's it is what it looks like it's just elbow grease you know that's the thing about hot ones that it is it is just by design a labor-intensive show 
And I think that it's just as important to do it myself, you know, mm. and uh, not that I do it all by myself. Like at this point, I've got like my little brother doing dossiers mm. and then Chris <laughs> Schoenberger, who's my creative partner in all this. Mm -hmm. What we'll do is we'll divide and conquer. So I'll send him all the profiles and local paper stories and magazine articles and whatever that I'm going to read. And with the podcast that I'm going to listen to, if it's an artist, we'll listen to their music. Mm -hmm. If it's an actor. We'll watch her movie. Do you it's just like, drop everything when you have booked a guest? Like, how much do time everything. do you commit to just researching and consuming? Every minute that I have. So sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have that much of a lead time. Like, maybe you're able to confirm somebody and shoot it in a matter of like 48 hours. You know, like, wow. but if that's what I have, then whatever. Then I'm not going to. You drop wow. you drop everything that possible and you just boom, consume everything. Well, you have to. And I think, too, as the show's grown, you know, now there are like more and more expectations. Like, mm -hmm. it's funny because like at the beginning when like stuff was getting 15,000 views, you were like, whatever. But then like, there's part of you that almost wishes, not that I want to say that, like, not that I want the show to fall off. But like, now I already know that like millions of people are going to see it. So I can't embarrass myself right. on the stage off. that big. Yeah. So it actually yeah. like ratchets, ratchets that up. And then two is, you know, the viewer experience is always different because we have such a wide array of personalities, you know, because it ultimately is just the wings, the hot sauce, a black background, and a bald guy. Mm -hmm. So to keep that going <laughs> on a longevity level, people's expectations only get higher. Mm -hmm. They see something, and then they need to see something different or see something mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's going to stay, and eventually it's going to fall off. So I always feel like as the show has gotten more popular, like that process has actually gotten more intense Interesting. to a point that there, I don't know if I can... Sometimes you have to, like, manage your time. Because as, as someone who's now dabbling in interviews, doing what we do here, I, I'm i trying to think of myself more as, like, an interviewer and less, like, a comedian who's trying to be funny when I'm sitting right. here across from somebody. So part of the challenge that I have is, like, time management. So you find a three-hour podcast. You can't listen to the whole podcast. You don't have enough time, right? Or do right. you? No, or do like, you? But like, where do you find your nuggets generally? Do you? So, what I'll do there is like, what's good about the podcast is you can play that at two x. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, really, I really? Fast. Yeah. So I can just put my headphones <laughs> in and like on my walk to work, like I actually can crank out that podcast or like whatever. Like at the wow. when I get home or whatever before I go to bed, like I actually can crank out that podcast or that book on tape or what have you by just like cranking. So you're going to consume it all in its entirety. Well, here, until, like, you know, you can find these nuggets. Like, I think what I look at, too, is, like, at this point, watching so many interviews, like, in research, I'll look at body language as much as I talk mm. about, like, what's mm. being discussed. Because, like, sometimes you can see in maybe, like, an interview that isn't great that, like, that person doing the interview is just leaving a lot of change on the table. Mm. Like, maybe they'll, like, ask something, but because they're just thinking about the next question and because, yeah. like, this is just some sort of formula, like, they're not really looking at the guests. So, like, yeah. you can kind of see where, like, maybe they're, maybe they, like, perk up a little bit and then they're, like, onto the next question. So the mm. person's kind of like, oh, like, you know, like, you can kind of right. see, like, maybe they kind of wanted that topic to be explored a little bit deeper. Like, mm. I'll just put that topic and that person together, see if I can find, like, what has been said about it, what's being said about that thing, try to put together some sort of like hot one style question around it. And that's sort of like, you know, just in, as much as like finding these random truffles in the ground, like at the same time, you're kind of like looking at what other interviewers leave on the table too. Mm, that's so, so interesting. And I think too that like I need to know that because there's so much that can happen on the spot and so mm -hmm. much that you need to improv in that time. And I have to like really know that person and think about that person and make that person a box. I'm almost like interviewing that box because I've mm -hmm. done just as much research and Chris Schoenberg's done just as much research as we have sort of just this like armchair psychology. Mm. Interesting. Do you have an interview philosophy, like some kind of guiding principle that that you find helps you? I mean, I think it's just, uh, you know, you look at what's interesting to you at some level. I think that's like 30 percent. You think about your audience to a certain degree. And then, you know, the, I think that like what people like about Hot Ones is it's just a naturally humanizing experience, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's not like taking the celebrity, which by definition is, you know, these people living this unattainable lifestyle, you know, and then like, taking it down to just a normal level because like, you know, if we want to talk about like internet famous or what, you know, like just whatever, it's like normal people. And I like, mm -hmm. I, you know, like I like when people are just 
You know, I think that people that live in that spotlight, they like when people are just being normal to them. Mm -hmm. They don't like being mm -hmm. treated necessarily like yeah, they're sure. up here, yeah. for, you know? And so, like, yeah. in the process of, like, the wings and then contextualizing a question, that's part of the philosophy. I'll circle back on that. You can just take it down to a more human experience, and that's what people like watching it and mm -hmm. feel connected to it. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to touch on something there and just this, where well, did I go? I got into that weed chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Sean shows up. Love he's that. Like, <laughs> love that. Uh, <laughs> oh in LA, it's so amazing to go in these stores and stuff. I, I'm like, I have candy. Store. I don't. I don't like weed. But I'm uh, always shocked with the like the products with the, weed here. I don't, I'm just. It's that's what I'm into. Amazing. Like products, everybody like, oh, I know. Churros? Everybody I'm related to blazes hard. Yeah. And every I've time. Seen some wacky new shit. <laughs> every, every time we go to a friend and hang out, I end up consuming it by mistake oh right <laughs> you'll just because you go into a pantry and then yeah, you're like yeah like we were at our friend's house and we just grabbed juice <laughs> drink from the fridge fucking juice like nothing safe anymore <laughs> yeah no I, I like I'll have like a pomegranate juice and it will just look like pomegranate yeah juice. I even look on purpose because I know there's a chance and I still missed it and every time it ha I think it's happened actually twice in the past year and every time it happens we're like we gotta split right. we gotta go home it's now that, it's gonna be that bad that we need to go home <laughs> I need to leave this party. <laughs> I like to just dabble because it'll take the edge off a little bit. But yeah, like if I'm going to commit, then yeah, for sure. I need to not be in public. Um, <laughs> on a podcast. I can't fuck. Yeah, I can't. I can't fuck with. Uh, I can't fuck with weed. It just makes me paranoid. I wish I enjoyed it as much as I see people enjoying it. I wish that all the time for myself. I see like they're just like so relaxed apparently. <laughs> but when I take it, it's the opposite of relaxation. I think for me, it started off. I was like a very relaxing thing, and then like just over the years, it's like yeah, kind when of you have a more shit thing. knocking around. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you tell me, I'm curious about your process. Okay, if you were going to research Sean Evans, <laughs> like I did, <laughs> he did what, a good job. Where, where would you start? <laughs> ah, thanks. I try. But um, where, where, how would you start? What would that process look like? Where would you start? Well, it would just start with like just like a big like a Google search and just trying to find out like the if the the pillars of what makes them mm. them like mm -hmm. whether it's like the music whether it's the hobbies whether it's like whatever find all those things first and just mm -hmm. write all that down just put that all into a spot but then what I find too is like into like social is a good place to go you know like just start at the bottom of somebody's Instagram and go all the way to the right. top mm. because they're like sharing these milestones in their right. life so you can kind of get a quick download on it and then same with the twitter stuff but then i think like another thing that you should look at especially with an athlete or a big star is their local paper because <laughs> those are the people who are going to really? be covering them before anybody else you wow. know what i mean so they'll end up doing those sort of like groundwork interviews so i think like if you look at it in a chronological sense that's helped me a lot is to like start at day one mm. and then end at where they are today that's cool try to like put in all those things like as you see them pop up and then chess game master your mind some sort of interview around what you came up with you so a, a like a, a consistent narrative do you try to do like a full narrative when you interview somebody like a story yeah i mean i think there's that but then you know you don't want to be locked into a convention so much you mm -hmm. know what i mean like there's that too so then and then th then you start thinking that way but then you also don't want to overthink shit either yeah, yeah. you know it's because it's like tough. it is tough it is yeah. always like a balancing act because that's like sometimes you know you get so into it you start like working it out i look like Matt Damon in Goodwill Hunting putting together a question, <laughs> and then you'd be like, "Well, if I ask this person, that they're gonna be like, Whoa, there's right. too many moving parts right. here. I don't even know how to answer it." So, mm -hmm. one of my biggest challenges is like, because it's a live show, dead air is like my worst nightmare. If I'm like, like if I'm listening intently to what you're saying, right, and then all of a sudden you're done talking. Because sometimes people will just be like, "Okay, and now I'm done talking," right, and then if I don't have the next question like locked up. The right. worst moment for me is being like, okay, <laughs> hang on one sec. And then, too, you know, though, if you're thinking about that next question, I'm not listening. You're not listening. Yeah. Right. So it's tough. It I don't know. Like, what, there's a, it's it's a like a act. skill that you need to Sometimes I feel learn. like I'm really bad at it. Well, here's what I would say. No, you're not. This is very fun. I would. This is this is a blast. You're well, great, Ethan. You're great. Thanks, you have a man. big fucking huge Thank you. podcast. You don't. Stay. I wish I was better. I wish I was better at that juggling act. But I think this, like, even like, I appreciate the compliment, but I think that too. Like, I think I'm not mm -hmm. shit all the time. I think it's like, I think it's kind of, if I was gonna make a comparison, like stand up comedy or something. You know, like your first hundred are gonna suck. 
but you need that first hundred. You know, yeah. like you just yeah. need to just keep stacking them. And even with the frequency with which we put out episodes, that's like another thing that I think about too. Like I really don't want to take a month off or two months or three months off in between seasons. Mm. Like, fu- I mean, I could use a fucking vacation, but like, like, because, you know, you feel like, all right, well then that means that I'm not shooting jumpers in the gym. And that means like next time it's game time, like it I'm going to be a little rusty. I'm going to be a little off. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm always just like thinking about how to hone it. It's too. always so hard for us because I have to go visit my family in Israel at least once a year or twice a year. And that is such a disruption in our, you know, schedule. Really? Because it's a long yeah. flight. I mean, it makes sense. And if you're going that far, you might as well go for not, you know, a weekend. It's right. got to be long. And then by the time we get back, it's so hard to get back to work. So I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. But it's also amazing that you're managing to post one every week for so long. That's... <laughs> like I wouldn't I wouldn't trade the last two years for anything. I'm not sure I could but, revive it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Wow. Yeah. You know. Well, I hope that you're not underappreciated at complex because I would say <laughs> and if and I'm just saying, if complex is watching this, you all owe Sean Evans a great debt. <laughs> because you built a show that they didn't take seriously. Into the crown jewel. Everybody's looking at complex now. Everybody's taking note. <laughs> You're pulling big fish. You're killing it. It's the best show on YouTube. Best show on not you. and, and, not and, even and, just saying yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's eat some <laughs> <Not> hot. <laughs> let's eat some spicy shit. There's some other questions here, but it's not that interesting. Let's just eat some spicy <laughs> shit. You know, and it, sometimes it's nice to just close it and then see where the conversation goes too. But I don't know. See, I'm always trying to figure out what's the best way to talk to somebody. And it's just real. I don't know. It's real hard. There's no. It's no perfect way to do it, you know. Yeah. And then I don't know. Some people like different things. So I would just say this, Ethan. This is a fucking amazing podcast. <laughs> and then, but two is it's like this. You can't. YouTube is great in that you can't make people just ride your wave. You have to build it, mm-hmm. you know. So whatever. If you're able to like put this thing together and build a channel that has millions and millions and millions of subscribers, it's because you've committed to a thing that people like and have been able to like scale that out and then kept that at a high level for so long. So you need to stop beating yourself up, Ethan. You're the fucking man. You (laughs) do. All right. Thanks, dude. (laughs) I got you, bro. (laughs) Let's eat some spice. Let's eat some spice. Let me check on it. All right, so we've got here the Pepper X. Pepper X last dab. And we've got here the Reaper. Are we got him? We've got milk. The crew wanted to get in on this, so they're coming it. in. I love it. We've got Alex. We've got Dan. We've got uh, who else? We got. Oh, we're gonna Ian show Ian. Ian. Ian is coming. Uh, Ian. He has to stand. His, with the meme with Ian, our intern, is that his face is always obscured. Ian was reason. in the parking lot. He uh, he, right. he waved down the Yukon. Yeah. He, we, well, usually <laughs> we don't let him in the office, so he just usually stands there, and then we summon him when we need something. Today we're giving him a special treat and letting him be in our presence. All right, so how do we, are we just going to dab it? Yeah. All right. Sadly, Sarah, our switcher, is unable to join us because somebody's got to fucking run the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, these look good. Uh, those don't look good. <laughs> those don't look good. See? Wings, wings, it's it's complicated logistically, Ethan. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm getting appreciation yeah, for yeah, it right exactly. now. Yeah, exactly. But, but you know what? 60 episodes into the podcast, if you just keep bringing these wings out, eventually they'll get it right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Unsauced. Like, what are we eating? You definitely don't want <laughs> You're this. You're not eating. Unsauced wings have got to be one of the most unappetizing sights. Right. Yeah, really so. I mean, that's just really not that appetizing. <laughs> All right, so uh, you're How vegetarian. should we do this? So let's just take, well, let's go with the, ep- everyone grab a wing. Or a, or a chips. chip. Dan's a vegetarian, so I'm gonna I wanna go pretty hard on this. Do you this. need plate, Sean? It's all you tell Sean. You yeah, you come. know what? Here's because like usually the wings would be sauced Here, me... with the sauce, and then you'd have an extra dab. So maybe we should mm. just be like a little bit a big healthier on a big boy dab. Big boy dab. Oh yeah. my god! I'm gonna shake this up. <laughs> all right. I'm doing a big boy dab. This first one looks can like you, a. Can you prepare mine a too? <laughs> yeah, I got you. <laughs> oh man. Oh god. Real, real dance with the Rubbed devil. Out. Is that so that's, Sean, that's, you that's that's, that's 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 a big boy dab? That's a big boy dab. Okay, all right. <laughs> you like, everyone gets a big boy dab. I don't want anyone to regret not taking a big boy dab. Oh yeah. This thing is thick, that. man. It's <laughs> thick boy. <laughs> oh. 
Okay. Make sure Shredder doesn't get a bite of this because I'm afraid yeah. it'll kill yeah. the poor guy. <laughs> Maybe take him out. <laughs> no, Shredder. Should I give him one? <laughs> give him one. Is this a... It's a big boy dab, you It's a big boy dab. You, you approve. Okay. Yeah, he approves. Sean approves. It's a thick boy dab. <laughs> Here, why don't you, uh, you can dab. Go ahead, dear. I don't want to dab, I don't want to dab over dab you and then be like, oh, Ethan fucking, I'm <laughs> suing <laughs> Ethan. I'm suing <laughs> Ethan for... You didn't sign anything. That's true. Yeah, shit. I think this release. is yours. Just say, look into the camera and say, I relieve you guys of all liability. All, all, all liability, I will <laughs> not right. sue. Come on, take your time. Uh, I relieve you of all liability. Yeah. <laughs> I relieve you of all liability. Is that how you guys do stuff at Complex? That's legal, right? <laughs> That's legal, right? <laughs> That's yeah. Yeah. Sean, I trust yeah. you. Yeah, you guys are good. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do two. And then let's continue this conversation. Love it. Um, so you're going to do the X? Yeah, I'll get in that X. Yeah, this yeah, this is the Cuz then we've the got OG. This is the real one, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the X. Okay. And then that I'm actually really honored to have that cuz it's quite rare. There's not a lot of yeah. bottles of that. Yeah, X. it's crazy. Yeah. They're like watch- going for like 90 bucks on eBay. Oh, Are you serious? God. I saw I was wow. watching uh, the video about it and I was like, "Wait, man, we probably don't actually have the X in the stash you sent us." But but you <laughs> did. did. Oh, bro, you <laughs> did. And I was so Eli, stoked. I love you, Ethan. Love you. I love you, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. You're the greatest. Is this good? That's a big boy, dad. Okay, everyone's. G- oh, not you. Uh, Sorry. Oh, <laughs> that's that's the most important one. We got a poster. You. Whoa. Oh, that's a big boy, Dad. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's a regret. Yeah, yeah. Here, I'll take <laughs> more. Should <laughs> I take more? You can. If you're being generous. Ooh. Oh my god. Ooh. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, you know it's bad when Sean's like, I'm like that's yeah. too much. Take this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I feel like we're all gonna regret this. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, guys, let's do this. Here we go. Don't eat into the mic. I've made that mistake too Cheers. many times. Right, let it rip. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Oh no. I can already tell it's really hot. <laughs> Very tangy. Oh. Citrusy. Flavor's good. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Sean. Look at a close up of Sean. <laughs> the heroic the heroics are gone. <laughs> Typically. Is it- I can Ooh. inch it up. Really good flavor, actually. Yeah, I mean All right. it was delicious for the first few seconds. That was great. <laughs> I was making fun of that, but the flavor is real good. I don't know if Ooh. I can make another bite because I only took half of the dab. You didn't take the whole dab. It's fine, but you know that's probably a more sensible decision. Wow! But, cool, we did it. <laughs> we made it. I'm going back for Anybody seconds, man. Stomach pound, like just throbbing. <laughs> no, <probably. laughs> Maybe having an allergic I think reaction. Too, yeah. Like I you think like need, two. Um, you need it's one of those things scared? where. Is that happening? No, I'm okay. okay. <laughs> I like, I'm, should I be like breathing no. heavily? Are you, are you scared? No, no. I'm just gonna drive to the local network. <laughs> <laughs> Urgent care. I don't have insurance. My mouth is on fire. All right. <laughs> I'm fine, actually. It's is it, yeah. What's it's, wrong I feel with like you? I'm fine. It was kind of good. I'm going back for seconds. There you go. You know that's because that's the thing. We like you want to make it good. And then that's too like <laughs> even when I go to. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> Are you, you're shaking. He can't handle spice. He, he warned us that he has a very low spice tolerance. Mm, but not like anymore. It's a, it's a it's a baptism by fire. Like go. now at this point, there you go. you'll be inching it up. Like when I went <clears> to <throat> Howlin' Ray's over there in Chinatown, this guy, Chef Johnny Zone, there, he does this amazing Nashville style hot chicken, and it's so hot. But it's so good, so I find myself just in this like you know torturous yeah. eating experience. But I kind of can't stop because the chicken's so good. I had that problem when I was in Thailand. The food there is so spicy, but it's so good. Yeah, and you just yeah, you're torturing the it, the tongue. It's just the tongue specifically is very painful. Yeah, I'm there right now. <laughs> I'm there. You had to go in for the specifically sec- like <laughs> on the right side of my mouth. Like, why is it on the right side? <laughs> you probably just, just had there. some contact. Yeah, yeah just yeah. sit there. Jesus. I really want to finish milk? it because all you, you guys did it. better thing. Yeah, like, you don't have to. I got to do it because everyone did it. I feel like if I'm I took another it. bite, it would make it like this, way worse. I the did. second, The second, I'm regretting. The first, I was like, oh, that wasn't so bad. I'll, I'll go back for seconds. Okay. But, but it really takes a couple minutes to creep on you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm getting And that. then, um, you know what, though, I find it does oh like kind of, it's like um, you get sort of a head buzz off it. Like, yeah, I just of, got a buzz. You look fucking hot. No, but it I mean, that's why they say spice is a beautiful thing, because it gives you that adrenaline rush of being in danger yeah. without actually being dangerous. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Whether so this maybe is that's dangerous. A, I'm is, committed. That's why, like, maybe I'm just... 
just an addict trying to trying to chase the You're dragon of this show. Yeah, that's why I don't give it up. <laughs> it has nothing to do with wanting to perfect it or, you know, get on top of my craft. Like it's all just you straight milk. up need that hit. Um, <clears throat> I think some of it is stuck in my tooth. So I keep getting like. <laughs> oh god. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like um, generally I'm fine, but my tongue is on fire. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just wherever it touches. Yeah, now it's the back of my throat. That's why I think if you took like a I bolt. tried to cheat it. I was like, if I swallow it fast, maybe. Mm. That was a mistake. You can't cheat it. <laughs> because then it hurts later. Oh my god. There's no cheating death. There's no you know, cheating. It'll get you one way or the other. Mm. How's everyone? You guys are all right? I'm okay. surviving. It tastes really good. Surviving. Yeah, it's like it the flavor is great. Thank yeah. you. That, thank you. I appreciate it. So, that. if you guys want to buy this, Heat Nest, do you I, benefit I, at all from people buying this personally? Uh, no, but it does help us make videos. So, mm. sure. You know, I don't get a penny off of it, but uh, you enjoy seeing the the, them fly up the shelf. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <sighs> Guys, pay Sean more. I mean, <laughs> can we do a Patreon for you personally? Would they be down with that? No. Support Sean Evans. God, yeah. my mouth is burning. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut because it's always a minefield for me. Yeah. But, uh, no. Yeah. I, but I appreciate. I appreciate that. I wish that you were. I'm gonna pay you. Yeah. I'm gonna pay. You. I'm just gonna start sending you a check every month. To keep doing what you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> Um, I, I'm not good at expressing it, but my mouth is burning right now. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Ela seems like in really bad shape. But you, you went in for the second bite, and I think I that's, had uh, to do it because everyone did it. She's a, it's just about the art, <laughs> suffering for the art. By the way, now I'm totally fine. Yeah. Should we try? You got a, you got a book. You're not okay, right? <laughs> I feel like I should We're tell you yeah. if you're on camera. No, no, I appreciate that. I feel like my heart. One time, I. I'm always on the fence about telling people, you have, it's still on the side of your nose. Oh my God. <laughs> I'll just say, I'll give a little anecdote. One time I walked around all day with a big book hanging. And a friend said to me, and it's always an awkward thing to be like, hey, you have a book hanging. But a friend said to me, you've got a book hanging. And I was so grateful that he told me <laughs> right. that I like to be, res I like to share. Because if I saw that book hanging, I didn't say anything. Oh, that's that's kind of that's fucked up. Move, right. Yeah. No, but it. you're just avoiding the conflict. But you're not being a good friend. You no, know? you're not. Yeah. You're not. You're not. No. So if you. So moral of this whole interview. If you see a friend and he's got a bug hanging, be a good friend and tell him he's got a bug hanging. Right. That's the moral. I'm not even <laughs> listening to whatever Eli, you guys are talking Eli. about. <laughs> Should we try the other one? Is anyone up for it? Yeah, I'll try it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh. All right. Oh, God. Now you're gonna make me try the other one. You don't have Nobody, to. No. You, don't, you, don't <laughs> have, you don't have to. <laughs> Nobody here is is. Well, you this know. is less, right? Like well, we've already no. I think no. That this oh, is what no, I'd okay. say about it. I think that confirm that. Mm -hmm. I think that if you have Anybody ten people guys? and you yeah, try yeah. both sauces, yeah. I think half of the people tell you that the Pepper X version is hotter, and maybe half. You know, it's just one of those things. Like, once you're in, like, you? who's better? Yes, yes, boy. It's like you know, <laughs> who's better, Steph Curry or James Harden or LeBron James? Right. Like, eventually you They're just end up stars. in a space. Yeah, I feel like yeah. we're on hot ones now. I feel like you. <laughs> <laughs> So it was one, two, three, four, five. Eli, do you want one? I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Wanna, I don't want to, you know, fuck your life up or anything. <laughs> We're moving this weekend, so I'm going to need your help. Yeah, I need uh, abled bodied so, um, people. So you were out here in LA shooting something, some right? What did you right shoot? There. I'm going, you know. I was hanging out with Philly D yesterday. That's so cool. <laughs> I'm glad Philly that D. he made it on the. Uh, He's a friend of the show. Great yeah. guy. He's a, uh, he's such a great guy. I'm this putting is, on. You know, I don't. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Show that. Show that. Is there yeah. any bottle left? <laughs> I'm hearing Alex behind me being like, "What is he doing?" <laughs> That's serious, dude. All right, that whole plate. <laughs> you don't have to eat that. But I am absolved of all. Sorry, what were you saying? Philly D, friend of the show. Great guy. Yeah, yeah. So, Philly, uh, which one I was at on? Philly. Uh, it's real. Uh, <laughs> What's behind that door? Um, okay. you don't tell, don't take Which one. one do I take? Don't take one. I see your hesitation. Yeah, it was uh, went over to Philly DHQ and I did uh, an interview with him, like for his show, and then he went and did hot ones with us, the old switcheroo. <laughs> the old switcheroo. I love it. I'm looking forward to that. So you filmed it yesterday. Yep. So how long does it take to actually produce that? So you know, 
as you know, with like somebody has to like crank this out, there's like a lot of coordination that happens. You're doing it live, but it's like, you know, we'll have to hit like a peg on a movie or this on an album release or whatever. So it's like maybe you shoot something a month before it ends up right. hitting the website. Maybe you sh- maybe before it hits the YouTube page. Maybe you shoot something eight days before it hits. Like our fastest turnaround ever is a week, and that's like really wow. yeah. That's just like if us being aggressive as possible it would be like we shoot it on Thursday, publish it on Thursday. No. Um, yeah. You've but, done that? Yeah, we've done that a couple times. Wait, you you to. shot and posted the same day? No, no, no. A week. Oh, yeah. a week. Yeah, okay, yeah. a week. Let's take a bite. Let's take a bite. I want to ask so more Philly about your post production. Let me take a little bit. Not this Thursday, but the next one. Okay. You, well, okay. You might, as well, in my opinion, a little bite is as bad as just taking all of it. But maybe I'm wrong. I Cheers, don't trust guys. you. I don't trust you. Do you correct me if I'm wrong? Is that not right? It, uh, it made my brain go ding, like when you said that. So no. Oh, this one's a totally different flavor. <laughs> yeah. Completely different. I like the other one, actually. Mm-hmm. I find it to be more flavorful. It's in my throat. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That one's more God. fucked up, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> immediately feeling that way. Yeah. Maybe it's because I've already been in the, it. The other one tastes better. I do like... But this one is like kind of like you immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having flashbacks <laughs> to our episode. Oh my, <laughs> <laughs> Before you live. oh my god! So, yeah, they're not. That one's. Although those dabs were larger. Need some? They were very aggressive dabs. <laughs> all around. Was, those are aggressive. I was a fuck around. I'm trying to make up for last time. So tell me about I your post like production process. <laughs> yeah. Because a week to edit an interview seems like a lot from where I come from, but we're very yeah. But we get small you know, operation. There's like a whole thing where you have a whole score to it, you know, like with mm. hot ones, like right, right, you know. So like it'll be like a whole thing, you know. You'll take this hour and ten minute interview. You'll like. <laughs> What I'll do is uh, go in with an editor, and then we'll like cut it down to like just the content. So you're involved in the editing process. Yeah, like down to picking the. Music you're on the top. You you. Th- you focus on all the details. You're involved. <laughs> There's no part of the sandwich that I'm not involved with. Like That's we have an amazing editor, and I want to shout out Chris Murphy because he's an unsung mm-hmm. hero in all this. So the editing is great. Yeah. So. Chris Murphy, love you, buddy. And he's an amazing editor. But yeah, like from the research to the wings no to milk. the interview you to Let's top go. me off, boy. <laughs> to uh to every aspect, to like picking music and cutting <laughs> angles and everything. Yeah, like I'm involved in all of it. I can't give it up. I'm like so obsessed with it. Eli, are you okay? No. <laughs> Drink the milk, no. it helps. Drink it all. The milk really does help. My heart is like <laughs> It's not good. Oh, <laughs> I feel like the Reaper was way harsher on initial intake, but it, it has it's fallen off quicker mm. than mm. the pepper. Tristan. I would say that that's actually it is that's that's true. Like it's that's uh, a correct assessment. That's a correct assessment. It's a yin yang yeah. situation with those two. It's the the pepper X that that crept up. Yeah, exactly. I was like, like that's why we like, had a second. I was like, that wasn't bad at all. Yeah. Right. And then a minute later, I'm dying. It has like a late wave creep, and yeah. like, yeah. and too, because the enough? taste is kind of pleasant at first. Like yeah, the ta- like, yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, this yeah, is exactly. nice. Feels like, uh, feels like I was teabagged by Satan. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like I was teabagged by Satan. <laughs> it looks like you were teabagged by Satan. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling, Alex? I'm good. Your face is <laughs> fucked up. What the? Hey, man, that's all. Right. You're coming in regular. <laughs> I've never seen Ian like this at all. <laughs> Man. Um, do the fans know that you're so involved in the whole creative? Do they see you as the host, or are they like, this is his show? Because this is very well, much you know this what? Is like, your some show. Some people don't even think I'm writing questions and shit. Yeah. You know, like people, which actually I think you, is a compliment because it's like, oh, Sean's like so fucking handsome and electric on camera that everybody, <laughs> yeah. everybody's yeah. Doing, yeah. Right. doing the work for him. You know what I mean? It's like, that I, I always like, that's usually people like trying to take a shot at me, but I'm always like, thank you for Hell saying yeah. that. Like, I really appreciate right, that. Right, right. But yeah, there's like there's no there's no part of it that I'm not touching, and I don't I, which which actually like is not a good thing. I'm like no, it know. is a good thing if it's I mean, your it show. Is. You want to know what's going on. All the, I mean, and that, that's probably a re- big reason why it's so quality. Why the quality 
has been there from the beginning and and persists. Well, because yeah, you know, like in that way, you know, it won't because I won't let it. Like it won't dip because I just won't let it. So there is that part. But then it is, you know, obviously such a labor intensive show that sometimes you think like maybe you can't grow outside of it because you're so in the weeds on every mm-hmm. single part. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. that's a yeah, that's also true. I mean, in our case, for example, we're doing like the Teddy Fresh, the podcast, and the H three, and sometimes I feel like. I try to work too much on everyone and get torn. Right. In and you three have different to, directions. But at least you got at least you got three guys here. Yeah. You know, they help keep that tent up. Mm-hmm. No, they trust the these guys. You like these guys? They're the greatest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> and every once in a while, I just gotta bring them out here and torture them, <laughs> yeah, and put, yeah, them yeah, put them on display. I, just say, I like these guys because you're they about came out. the cause. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're about the cause. Yeah. Shredder's like, right. what is happening? I want to say thank you, Sean Evans, so much for coming out. Thank you for having. You are the greatest. You are appreciated. You are loved. Um, thank you, dude. Thank you. Is there anything that you want to tell the people? You do this whole thing, like, hey, what are you promoting? What are you working um, on? Bud? You know. Hot ones. Be really First careful about Shredder, by the way. Okay. Subscribe to First We Feast if you like the shows, if you like the episodes. It's it's Hot Ones. It's Sean in the Wild. It's the Burger Show. We have food skills and food grills and more amazing things on the way. So First We Feast, you know, it's not just Hot Ones. I really think that, you know, we check a lot of boxes with that, and there's a lot of dope shit to check out. So if you're bored, you're looking for an internet rabbit hole to go down. I highly suggest that one. <laughs> I also highly suggest it. It's Me the too. Great. It's the best Thank show you. on YouTube. Um, guys, <laughs> the world doesn't deserve you, Ela. No. <laughs> I agree. Well, that's nice. Yeah. You guys can subscribe to our channel for free. Do you know that free money does exist? It does. I'm telling you, if you connect your Twitch Prime account <laughs> to. Uh, strike that. If you connect your Amazon Prime account to Twitch, you can subscribe every month for free. It's free money. You, If you can't support our sponsors or do or buy shirts or any bullshit and you want to help support us, connect the account. It's free. Okay? Thank you. God bless. Next week, we have Dead Mouse joining us. Please leave your questions on the subreddit for him. <laughs> and I want to say, if you guys are looking for updates about when we are going live, who our guest is, uh, whatever updates, if we're late, if we're early... Follow the H3 podcast <laughs> on Twitter for all future updates. Or follow me on Instagram at H3H3 Productions. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. And um, hope to see you again soon, buddy. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. Thank you. Guys, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all have a great weekend. It's already the weekend. Saturday. Our yeah, whole week has been so, so weird. We usually do it on Friday. I threw <laughs> off your schedule. No, it's fine. It's flexible. I think it's our first weekend show, though, just coincidentally. So it's been a weird, it's been like, it feels like The whole week has been weird, yeah. All right. (laughs) Thanks for watching. Bye, guys. Thank you. Love y'all. Appreciate you. Got it. Got it.